There we go. We are live. Live. Hank Strange is back from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. This is going to be a fun show tonight. We are calling it Bullpup Rifles, Everything You Need to Know. And, of course, we've got Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms. He's here. But our very, very special guest is Ken from k m Arms, makers of the M17S in both 308, which is my favorite caliber, and 556. Right, Ken? You got it. All right. So, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on. This is very brave of you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're really aware of what you get into right now. Yeah, well, I can always opt out, yeah, so that's no, all right. Don't leave. Don't leave. Stay with us. It's going to be fun. Just, all you got to do is hit the X button. You're out. Yeah, no, no. Stay yeah. with us, Ken. We, we, you know, yeah. we, we love you. So this, I think this is really going to be fun. This is something that I'm a big fan of. I know you obviously are, Ken, because you make bullpup so you're you're a fan of this oh lola's telling me i don't even have i don't even have lights on in the studio apparently so lola's throwing on lights so um ken first of all before we get into anything here um here's what i want to do i want to let you tell like explain to everyone what k m arms is for folks out there that don't know about k m arms and how you started the whole thing okay well k m Arms is a we're a small manufacturing facility. Um, started out doing aerospace part, parts. Worked in the aerospace industry for years, uh, um, and started Smith and started doing a lot of work on Bushmasters, um, and then it just kind of evolved from there. I was you know always getting all these Bushmasters in and doing work on them, and decided you know what I can make a better mouse trap. So I went through and started the redesign process of that firearm and making it into what it is today. So basically, the M17S is is what you're you know what you're you're based on here. You just improved it, right? Right. So the the trademark name is mine. Um, so it's it's all my all my rifle. Um, the design looks similar so when you when you look at the two platforms they they look kind of similar um but it's about 90 95 percent different than the bushmaster model as far as internals go and mechanisms how everything works um it it is different so it's not it's not the same platform by by any means Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, because I think we should explain that a little bit to people. Can you just give us the history on the original gun and 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 roughly what you know? What do people think about it today? I know there's you know there's still a few of them out there, more than a few. Yeah, there yeah there's still there's still quite a few of them. I still get them in the shop every once in a while to uh, do modifications to them to turn them into um, you know basically a shootable rifle. Um, it started out. Um, with the design from Charles St. George um, in Australia. And he, he designed it, developed it. Um, it didn't really um, go anywhere there. It then came here to the U.S. Um, for import. And then there was some talks back and forth uh, with Bushmaster um, to basically um, start manufacturing the rifle here in the US and then the company that was doing the import and all of that paperwork, they kind of went belly up and Bushmaster basically, from my understanding, is they basically inherited the design and they started making them. Oh, okay. And so, you know, it really never, to my understanding, it really never was theirs. Um, they just manufactured it and did for 12 years or so and then, then stopped all manufacturing of it. And, Oh, okay. Basically, basically, no support. If if you call Bushmaster for support on that rifle, they basically give you my name and number, and you end up calling me um, for support of of that rifle. I'm the only one really in the U.S. that's supporting that rifle. Right. I, so do have, the, I do. Yeah, you're the authority. You're the guy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm the guy to to go to on that platform. No one else really knows anything, you know, about that firearm. Um, it's basically it's basically gone from Bushmaster's vocabulary, and they they do no support on it at all. No screws, no washers, no springs, nothing. They send you to me. Pretty okay. sad, in, in my opinion, because they they did when they closed um, the facility that was making this rifle. They shipped everything to New York. Mm -hmm. And I was actually talking with them 
you know, trying to negotiate with them for all of their spare parts and ever happened. So, oh, wow. So, so what kind of parts do you actually have? I mean, what kind of support can you offer to folks that do have the original rifle? There's, there's not a lot. Um, some of the piston, the gas piston stuff, um, that I have, um, I have a, a gas block that, that will interchange with it. Um, some, some trigger linkage, um, some other odds and end odds and end parts, but nothing, nothing really, you know, none of the fire control group, you know, if your hammer spring goes bad or the hammer goes bad, none of those parts are available. Wow. So pretty, it seems to me like these are really going to become serious collector's items because what happens when there's no, nothing left? Right. You know, I, I do have firing pins because, you know, sometimes firing pins will go bad and it's not a standard firing pin. So I do have firing pins okay. um, in the bolt carrier group. That's the only thing that I've ever seen go bad on them is a firing pin. So I do, I do make those. Um, the actual fire control group with the hammer and the springs, I've never seen any of that stuff go bad. So, um, you know, you should be okay with that. I, I haven't been able to not turn any Bushmaster into a shooter. You know, okay. someone's having someone's having problems with them. I can usually work with them over the phone to get them up and going. Um, or sometimes they have to send it to me and I've got to go through it and see what's wrong with it. Okay. So do you advise folks out there? Like, so let's say you come across one at a, I don't know. Uh, at Knob Creek? Yeah. Knob Creek, a bazaar, <laughs> you know, gun show or something like that. Is it advisable to get into one or, and what things do people need to know if they do want to buy one? Well, the, the thing is, is that if, if you buy one currently right now, market is demanding anywhere, you know, from 700 to a thousand dollars for them. You're, if you're going to get into one, you're going to get into one just because you want a piece of history. Right. If you're going to turn it in, if you're going to send it to me and turn it into a shooter, you're going to spend anywhere from another 350 to eight, nine hundred dollars depending on what you want done to it. So at that point, why not just buy one of mine and be done with it and have a much better rifle and one that is um, supported? Yeah, I mean, so, if, if I bought one, it would be it would probably be a guy like me who who's a bullpup, you know, fan and maybe wants it as a collector's thing. But you know, so you, you but you do want to be careful because you're gonna have to decide what you want to do with the money. And in the end, it may be a better for you to just get yourself like a M17s. I'm going to show this. This is the one that we have over here in the Hank Strange situation. Check out this beautiful thing. This is a 308 version in the, uh, is this the burnt bronze, Ken? Yeah, yeah, I called it the, the bronze. Um, but, you know, we'll just say right now that it's not available in that co color unless you want to, you know, sign a waiver saying that you'll, You'll take it even though there's, there's flaws because of the anodize and all that kind of good stuff. Right. So I, I happen to get like one of the only perfect ones that went out there. So it was too difficult uh, to it was too difficult to really get these done, right? With the anodizing yeah. and everything. Okay. Yeah, it was it, it was a pain. Let me let me just grab a couple samples real quick if we're talking colors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what so, what, hap what happens with the colors is it they, they can be inconsistent. So. so so why is that, Walter? I mean, you're, you're as just a the anodize, It's the anodizing process. I mean, um, oh, I talked to people about doing different colors, and they wanted to get samples to establish the colors I want and test this and test that. And um, it's okay. a it's a it's a drawn out process. Yeah. So it's a very it's a very expensive process on your end as a manufacturer, and then it's hit and miss because things don't always. Uh, it, it might not come in like you think it should come in, and you're right. stuck with it. So. Okay. Right. So, so if you look, you know, it's it doesn't give full variation in what I'm seeing here. But if you, if you look, you know, there is a a variation in color. Yeah, that looks it, like gray and green. Right, and it is green and green. Okay. Oh. Okay. But one and, one man's green is not the other man's green. So <laughs> Right. Okay. So now these are both what the anodizer calls brown. Okay. Really? <laughs> the <laughs> left okay. one looks brown to me. I don't know. Okay. So this is this is what your rifle is in. And okay. I don't call it a brown, I call it a bronze. Okay? okay. But when you put it up to the to the actual brown, um it yeah, you it's know, a they're, stark they're, difference. There's not oh, that yeah, electricity sure. in the color. Yeah, for sure. So, 
what happens when I get an upper that's this color and I get a lower that's this color? Yeah. They you don't match. You got a cluster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for so for folks who want to know out there, that's the reason. So now you've how many colors are you actually offering now? Um, black, black, and black. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Okay. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I, I actually, yeah. yeah, even even black can be challenging sometimes. So. Yeah, I usually don't have um, any problems with my black. Uh, my my anodizer does really good with the the type three type three black. And see, and these colors are in a type three also, and that's what's so difficult. Even with the type two colors, the decorative color, which everybody does, and you know. Um, so what does it, it mean? What's the difference between type two and type three? Is that like a deepness in color or? What? Yeah. So so type two is a decorative anodize, and it's basically just a surface color colorization. Type three is what they call a mil spec, which is a hard anodize, which actually is goes one thousandths into the surface and one thousandths out of the surface. So it gives you that really hard coated finish. Okay, so any rifle that you see that's anodized that is a color, it is a type two, which is just a decorative color colorization. It is not durable. It will scratch really easy, and it, it's just it's decorative is all that it is. Yeah, all of your firearms that you get will be, um, you know, type three as as long as it's black. If it's a color, it it will be type two. So were so, you char were you charging extra for the color on yours? No, no, nope. okay. I was charged because my anodizer wasn't charging me more. Um, I could take um, and have one done, or I could have five done, or thirty of them done, or a hundred of them done. It didn't matter. They the, wow. the price was the same, so I wasn't charging anything extra. But yeah, so when I would get one or two or three that wouldn't match, you know, then I would have to get them stripped. I'd have to resand blast them. I'd have to take them back. Who absorbs the losses on something like that? Both of you guys are manufacturers. Who absorbs those losses? You're looking at them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. They'll, yeah. they'll redo it. They'll redo it for, mm -hmm. for no cost um, because it's not right. But um, you know, I and have to go pick I have to go pick it up. I have to bring it back here. I have to sandblast it. I got to take it back. You know, I end up taking taking that rifle three trips to the anodizer. It's not worth it. Wow. Okay. So let's let's segue into this since you're talking about that. Uh, first of all, I want to let folks know that you're not seeing like a lower third on Ken's thing. We really try. That's why we came on a little late. Someone has hacked his his computer and we cannot put the lower third so he is from KM arms if you look in the description of this video there's KM arms and there's a link um ken folks want to know how big is KM arms how much do you produce by yourself and how much is uh machined elsewhere um so we're we're a small manufacturer um don't want to get into you know how many employees or, or whatnot but um manufactured parts in-house for the platform that we make both the 556 and the 308 um, I would say about 85 percent of it is machined in-house um, barrels are not machined in-house bolts are not machined in-house carriers are not um, all of my round stuff my rods my piston um, any of that stuff all goes to a screw shop um, but everything else is is all made in house. Uh, I should say springs. I don't. I don't. I build all my own prototype springs, but I don't build. I don't manufacture any of my springs. I, I right. sub those out. And your trigger, the trigger, because this is the something that's very unique about the about your rifle. The trigger. It's one of the best triggers. I've, I think it's actually the best trigger I've seen on a bullpup. Um, that comes standard with the bullpup. Obviously, you can get aftermarket stuff from other places, but this comes standard with yours. It's an Elftman trigger, right? Yeah, I, I use this drop-in. Um, it's made by Elftman. Um, they, obviously, there's no trigger down here anymore because they cut it off for me. Um, but it's basically a, an Elftman uh, trigger that I drop in it. Um, I met Elftman at a, at a show, actually, their sales guy, Steve, um, and we got to talking and I was using standard AR-15 parts in, in my trigger mechanism. Um, so this is when you were in prototype? No, I was actually in production. Okay. I started, I started to send 
rifles out with AR-15 uh, fire control group um, and ended up having some issues with them um, and had to, you know, bring some rifles back because of the, the trigger mechanism. Um, I was using DPMS parts and they just weren't standing up to the quality that that I demanded. And so I decided, okay, well, let's try something different. So that's when I took and got a hold of the Elfman fire control group. I call it a fire control group. They call it a trigger because it is a trigger in an AR-15, but it's a fire control group in mine. Um, and we kind of partnered up ever since. Now, even though I had the AR-15 fire control group in it, I was still down three and a half, you know, four pounds. Um, because I was going that, that through. Was your, that was your poundage that you had? On yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. um, so now with the Elftman, I'm able to go through and have another option, even though I have a really good trigger in it. Um, it's adjustable now. So if you wanted to, to adjust it up or adjust it down, you can with, you know, a little turn of a little screw right here, a little set screw. You can turn that Turn that in, turn that out, and it will adjust the poundage on. Right. So, I mean, so, uh, like, I think we're kind of, like, jumping ahead a little bit, and I do want to go back and explain to folks out there what a bullpup is. Because, you know, I, I mean, we know, and, and I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this that are into bullpups and they understand. But just to, if, if you can explain for people out there um, how, the, how a tr the trigger, how pulling the trigger works on a bullpup. Okay. So, since we were talking about colors, this is a new color that oh, I. That looks like gray. Okay, it's a it's a NIB. It's a battle worn. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have pictures up soon, but this is the rifle that I grabbed. But so your trigger, you know, obviously you have your fire control group all the way in the back, and then you have your trigger up front. So you've got to overcome some linkage from your trigger all the way back to your fire control group, and that's where everybody struggles on getting a poundage for a trigger pull, something that is halfway decent. Um, so that's, that's the problem with the bullpups is your right. linkage. In your AR, your trigger is right up here in the front. So you're just pulling on the trigger. There's no yeah. linkage. So, right. so, have, so that linkage, the, the thing about it, and we'll, and we'll get into this when we talk about um, the other bullpups that we have there. So this linkage has to go back. You know, we've got all kinds of different variations on the linkages, but that creates in, inherent problems for that trigger pull that you get. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I can just pop this open. We'll probably talk more, more later about it. But yeah. you can see that I've got, you know, the trigger up front, and then it goes all the way down, linkage back yeah. to my patented linkage for my fire control group and that's where all the magic happens right and then the unique thing for this i don't know if folks can see it here but with the with the k&m the the unique thing about it is there's like a really tight channel that that linkage is sitting in so there's not a lot of flex i think that's what creates some issues with other bullpups right, right here well, yeah, the spongy feeling that you get in your other bullpups because it's not tight and crisp. I've got this channel that it runs in, and it is it is good and snug, but you don't get any of that flex. Right. I, I think, you know, you obviously have to shoot this. Uh, Walter, what do you think about bullpup triggers? You, you've, I know you've shot a bunch of them. You, you own a few, but you've shot a bunch of them. No, they're like you guys are talking about. They're usually kind of spongy and, and a lot of creep and... You know, and any, like anywhere from eight to 12 pounds. Right. Right. right, right. So, yeah, they're, they're not known for their uh, Christmas. Yeah. Nope. And that's all. It's always like it's an inherent problem that you see. I mean, for example, when the uh, even when the Tavor came out, because I think like I don't have one. I don't know if you have one, Ken. What's the. Yeah, I have one. Um, I mean, I've got a Tavor. I'm thinking about what is it? The something 2000. Oh, that's the, the FN, FS2, FN, FN, FS2000. Yeah, the FN FS2000, I mean, that's that thing is like probably the worst bullpup trigger that I've ever seen. Well, we'll, we'll get into triggers yeah, maybe later because yeah. so we're going to have a whole discussion on triggers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So the thing here is that I want to do before we move on from the trigger with yours is that um, that's included in the price, right? So tell folks that's out correct. there what your rifles go for. So the 556 um, list price are $17.99 and the 308 is $19.99. And that comes with 
the best trigger you will have in a bullpup guaranteed hand down, hands down. It comes out of the box with it. You don't have to spend another $300, $350 for an upgraded trigger. It, it's already great out of the box. Right, so, exactly. And, and, and for bullpup guys, for people who've gotten into bullpups, I know this, you, you're typically upgrading that trigger to something. There's a few companies out there that make uh, – that make upgraded triggers. That's going to cost you. I don't think I've seen anything under three hundred. No, they're they're three to three fifty, and there's three three manufacturers that do them for for the Tavor. Right. Yeah. Including, I think I see in the the back chat. I see Art from Shooting Sites. We can give him a there. Little you plug. go. Yeah. He makes the, <laughs> he make, he makes the Tav D. He makes the yeah. Tav D. Art's a good guy. He's my friend. He you know he always harasses me and gives me a hard time whenever possible. And I saw him in the back chat of this. I don't know if he's still there, but what what's up, Art? He does make he does make a, a trigger. So um, so what else can you tell us about the the MS seventeen S? You so you've got a five five six and a three oh eight, right? Is that it? You have yes, three hundred that, blackout. That's correct. That, that, the five five six and the three oh eight are the ones that are currently on the market. Those are currently okay. currently shipping. Uh, we have been shipping for quite a while. Um, I think you've had yours for. Is it a year? Uh, almost, almost a year, maybe yeah. a year. Love it. Yeah. I don't. I don't have. You know what? I don't have an optic on it right now, and this is going to be like a quick shame, shameful plug, because I don't have an optic on it right now, and there's a good reason for that, because um, Primary Arms just sent me the Platinum series. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Primary Arms out there, so I'm going to give them a plug. They make, I think, like very good, a good uh, money for money for value optics. But the Platinum series is like their really high-end uh, Japanese glass and all that, all that good stuff. This is a one to eight by twenty-four front focal plane, and it has the ACSS and all that kind of stuff in it. If you guys could see that, um, Dimitri from Primary Arms, it like really goes into detail. He designs these. He goes into a lot of detail. And this is for five five six, five four five, and three oh eight reticles. So that's what we're gonna put on there, Ken. Looks Thanks. good. Yeah, we're going to be shooting this on the um, on the 308, but we do have several videos of this. I think we did an in the wild. Like, you know what? I've actually done, I don't know at this point how many videos. Oh, one, oh, one, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> done, on this one, I've done I've done other videos on the oh, five, okay. five, five six. Yeah, come all on, right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, okay. I, I one of my first videos I did was uh, when you had the uh, five five six in prototype at the bullpup convention in Kentucky, which doesn't happen in Kentucky anymore. Well, the convention doesn't happen at all anymore. Oh, really? There's a, there's a bullpup shoot, but oh. that that's put on by two other companies. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you know, they used to be. I, I used to enjoy that, and that's where we first met Ken. And we, we you know we got into the five five six. We tested that. I am really like a big fan of the. So of so the let me get. I, so let me guess. I guess we'll be shooting that Sunday then, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to zero it. It's a. Uh, it's. I I really like this gun. We you know we can if if you want my thing on it. I'm I'm a fan of this. Um, you know, there's obviously some things on here that I'm sure people would want to know. The controls are a little bit different. A lot of guys want your typical AR style controls now, right? Yep. So those are a little different on this. And this is an all aluminum gun. I'm obviously going to let you get, you know, you're, you're going to be better at telling the story. But this, if you want all aluminum, and then to me, if you want parts that you can actually change, that this is like, you know, I think simplicity is genius. And this is really, it's one robust because of the tri-lug that you have in there. But then you can you you've got the ability of changing out all your parts because you're building it on a DPMS, right? You want to explain that? Right. Yeah. So the so the fire firing pin is a DPMS pattern firing pin. Right. Let me switch this up here. Um, so you you can switch the DPMS firing pin out if it goes bad. The ejector extractor. Um, all those springs, those pins are all DPMS parts. So yeah. um, you don't have to buy them for me. They're not proprietary. If anything goes wrong with them, you can order a local gun shop if they stock parts. Um, right. So and that seems like a pretty robust system that you have right there. That's That thing's tough. Yeah, you're you're not going to break any of those lugs. I mean, they're, they're beefy lugs, whereas on your AR-15, you're going to have – 
you know, you could have some issues with lugs breaking. The lug opposite of the extractor um, is a weak failure point. That, that lug will break. And then there's a hole that goes all the way through the, uh, the bolt carrier, and sometimes they crack and break there also. Mine doesn't have a hole that goes all the way through it. So mine has a, a proprietary cam system in it that holds the bolt open um, when it goes to strip off the next round. Okay. I just noticed you have two ejectors too. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Originally, originally when I developed this platform, um, I went through and I only had a single, single ejector on it and I could barely get the brass to come out. I mean, it was just dribbling out, dribbling out, dribbling out. Mm -hmm. Um, so in order to get it to shoot, you know, 20 feet, all I had to do was put in a second ejector and solved all my problems. Okay. Really, really crazy. I, I never would have thought of it. And that's why a lot of the 308s nowadays come with the, the dual ejectors. And if you have a 308 with a single ejector and you have ejection problems, that's your reason why. Oh, I is. see. Okay. I think so, the Knights, Knights Armaments, even their AR-223 rifles have dual ejectors too. Yeah, there's there's a couple couple out there that are that are doing that now. Um, very few on the five five six, um, but a lot of the three hundred eight platforms are have gone to the the dual. But as soon as I as soon as I went to dual, I didn't have any ejection problems at all. Right. I mean, so you have dual just on the three hundred eight. You have dual on the five five six as no, well, right? No, I got single on the five five six. Oh, you do? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep, it's just just a single. All right. So what does that add to the 308? Does it, I mean, it's probably not adding that much weight, but what kind of complexities did it add to the design? No, it, it, it's not adding any weight, but the, the design, um, because now you have to have, so you have to have a hole that goes through the bolt carrier so that it holds, or not the bolt carrier, but the bolt so that it holds the ejector pin in place. You know, there's a, there's a pin that go right there mm -hmm. and it goes all the way through. So now you have a hole that has to go through two other holes <laughs> and, and it's, and it's, you know, and it's a half a hole. So you have a hole here and then you have to put this other pin hole here. So it doesn't go all the way through or else that would be easy to do. But since you're doing half of a hole and a half of a hole, once that drill starts to go down through the hole, it then mm -hmm. is going to want to tend to wander. Yeah. Walks. Okay. So you got to keep it wa from walking in the, the first hole. So then it goes through and then you've got another hole that you have to do the same thing. Wow. So, okay. So that's where the, the issue comes in is making sure that that hole is straight and so that you can put a pin through it. Okay. And that's just in the manufacturing. Is that something that someone would come across cleaning the gun, like disassembling it and have any problems? No. Well, the, the only problem that you'll have disassembling it is, um, is driving the pin out to get the um, ejectors out because they're under, I mean, these ejector springs are monstrous ejector springs. Okay. And in order to, in order to get the pin out, you have to depress. Right. You got to put pressure on it. Yeah. You got it. You, and you have to depress them almost all the way to the, to the bottom of the face of the bolt. Um, and so once you do that, then you can pound the pin out. So, you know, that's, that's the problem is, is if you don't have a little vice or something to, to, uh, to preload it or two sets of hands. <laughs> yeah. Even, even two set, even two sets of hands. So I've got a little vice block that I made for, for installation. Oh, so, okay. so you can see that I put, I put the bolt in here and then I run the screw in and then puts pressure on them and then I can drive the pin in and you can buy devices like this from Brownells or any of uh, you know those gunsmithing type uh, places they they make um, bolt they make blocks yeah. to to do that because okay. just because just to to pound it out on a bench you can get the pin out but as soon as you take your your pin punch out Ooh. everything's gonna go flying all over the place <laughs> wear safety glasses please yeah exactly and then yeah. you get the phone call. I lost. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I need I need some spare parts. So, um, so what so do you I, do in that case? And do you have a video on how to do this? It's it's just like taking apart any AR-15 or AR-10. 
there's mm -hmm. lots of other videos out there. I don't have a specific video out there, but there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to how to remove the ejectors. And it's no different from my bolt than it is from the AR-15 or an AR-10. You just okay. pound it, you preload it, pound out the pin, and unpreload it, and the parts come out. Okay, no big cool. Deal. Okay. I, I just made this special block so I can do both my 5.56 five, and the 308 all in one tool, and I have all my pin punches and everything all kept all in a caddy, and it's all right there. You're so organized, man. You have uh, to. I don't know about that, but some, <laughs> some, things, some things I am. So, um, so what else do you, I know, like, one thing I just want to, just so people think that I'm not like, you know, like you think it's so awesome. The one thing that I that we did get feedback from is like this is a serious spring that you have on here. So to move this charging handle takes a little bit of strength. You want to explain right. what's up with that? Yeah, and the springs, the springs that you're pushing back are the action springs which push the carrier back. Mm -hmm. Now, the heavier these springs are, the harder they are to push back, the less recoil you're gonna feel when firing the the firearm. If if this was really light and the carrier came all the way back and slammed against the back buffer, that's where all of your um, your pounding is going to be. So you know, fire, 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 fire. Every time it hits the back, it's going to be hitting your shoulder. Um, okay. And that's and that's how I've been able to to tame the recoil quite a bit on this firearm is to have some strong action springs. And so that's that's why I did it. So because I wanted to have a light recoiling uh, 308. I didn't want something that was gonna kick like a mule. Um, so one of the, so then that creates, you know, a, a little bit of a challenge that when you go to charge the firearm, it's harder to, it's harder to pull back. So, you know, I can do it all day long. I'm not a, I'm not a wimp or a wuss. Oh, well, I don't know what okay. you're trying to say about okay. me, Ken. <laughs> okay. No, but the, there, there is a little, there's a, there's a technique that I use. Um, and that's so that you don't pull down or pull up. If you just take your hand and put it right up against the charging handle, right like this. Right. Give you a better shot. Put it all the way up against the charging handle, just like this. Push in, put pressure in, and then just pull it straight back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have this conversation sometimes with Walter when it comes to like the uh, bolt action 50 that he makes, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it sticks and it's hard to, to chamber another round well, and you got to sometimes it's I'm not doing it. Well, I'm not doing it right. And Walter's like, I, I don't know what you're doing. You have it's to do it's, not, do it it's right. not just you. It's as a lot of people do it. They go to open it and they don't get it through the, through the primary ejection. They try to come straight back before it's actually open. Right. And it won't open. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, we have to educate people on this, you know, people like myself as well. <laughs> yeah. so that's, you're, you're trying to make a video and look cool and it just, yeah. you know, sometimes you over try. So, you know, it's. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, that's the most important thing when you're making a video looking cool, I guess. <laughs> You have to look cool doing. Okay, Ken, someone wants to know, yeah. um, how about combining lighter springs with dampeners? Um, I haven't ever thought of it. Okay. Who asked that you question? Know, if Ken ever does this, who asked? Pat Poom. Oh, Pat Poom asked that question. So we'll, we'll, if we ever, if we ever invent anything out of this, Pat, we will send you a sticker. Uh, one other thing about having the heavier springs is it, it doesn't have any problem stripping the rounds off out of the magazine either. That's correct. Um, if you yeah. go light, if you go lightweight, you might not strip a f the first round or second round off a full mag. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and I don't find it. I don't find it to be that to really to be that big of a deal. I mean, I just you know, it's one of those things that I wanted people to know about out there. You know, just be aware of it. Yep. And yeah. you know, that's that's where I started in the development was you know making a spring, seeing if it would strip around. It wouldn't strip around. Go a little heavier. Go a little heavier. You know, get it right to that point where mm -hmm. it does strip around, and then go a little bit more. Okay. You know, yeah. you got to go, you got to go a little bit more um, because you want to be able to have it cycle and strip around every single time. Right. Okay. So is there anything, cause you know, we've been talking about this for a while, which is good. We'll, co we'll come back to it. Is there anything else you want us to know about the MS, the M17S? 
uh, either the 308 or the 556 before you know we move on and start talking like serious bullpup action here. Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I'm sure that we'll, we'll get back into some things on this rifle. Um, yeah. cause there's some, there's some great features on it, but, um, we can, we can start talking about some others and yeah. We'll, we'll so come, what do you, what we'll do you want to talk back. about first? What do you want? I don't know if folks out there have a preference of what we want to talk about. If you guys do want to hear us get, like get into specific things about these guns, we have like a lot of three, we have a lot of bullpups here. So what do you want to start with Ken? Um, I don't know. We can probably start with, uh, one of my oldest ones. If you want yeah. me to go grab it. Absolutely. Yeah. What's the right. oldest? Uh, so, you, so you have an EM two? <laughs> no, no, I, 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 not, not that old, but I've that's got like, that's the, the British one. Walter? Yeah, yeah. 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 So while Ken's doing that, Walter, you recently, I think last year you went to England, right? You checked out some museums in England. Um, yes. A, a lot of I don't know if the bullpup started here or in England. In my in the back of my mind, I think it was England. Do you want to tell us what you know about that? Yeah, I think the English really had a thing for the bullpup, and they tried and they tried and they tried and they tried new calibers, and of course, oh that one, yeah, the high standard. Yep. Yeah, I know, I know my stuff. Whoa, <laughs> that's test cool. me, test me, come on, test me. <laughs> so this is a, this is a twelve gauge. Um, called the uh, made by high standard um it's the model 10a and it's got a flashlight built into the the front of it oh wow did i see this in a movie this looks really familiar you probably have <laughs> probably but it's a it's a cool uh piece of it history is. that the, is really cool man that kind of kind of turns i don't i don't know what that was all about but it it kind of turns around but now that, does it, that have a charging handle out the side or is that set up for a lefty can no. shoot it also no, Probably just not. just here. Okay. It's okay. just it's basically just like a uh, standard shotgun because it's a right. reciprocating bolt, okay. um, you know. Right. Wow. But that that's probably the the oldest oldest one that I have. They built these between sixty seven and sixty nine. Wow. Okay. So what? When, were, so who built these? High standard. High standard. High standard. Okay. And what was the purpose of it? Uh, it was military? for police. It was police. for police, police and military. Okay. And this was an application here? Because I'm not very familiar with high standard. You guys probably know more than I do. I'm kind of like a new gun guy. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who exactly it was developed for. Mm -hmm. a, lot of those, a lot of those companies back then just came up with things and tried it and see if, the, if, they, if it would bite. You know, if it would take. You mean they actually experimented? They just didn't yeah. make AR-15s back in the 60s? In yeah. The 60s? Wow. <laughs> Maybe we should go back. <laughs> uh, let's go back pre-68, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, the reason why I say that is because nowadays, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but when, I, when we go to SHOT Show and we go to NRA and stuff like that, all you see, like every company, well, up until this year, I don't know what's going to happen next year when we go to the shows. It seems like everyone was just making an AR-15. So I'm kind of like surprised that, you know, as a relatively new gun guy, I've been doing this for like five years or something, that these companies actually experimented back in the days. Uh, there's so much, there's so many AR-15 parts now, it's kind of hard not to make an AR-15. You know, and it's, there's nothing, you don't have to be a... a, a, a uh, a huge designer to come up with an AR-15. You just buy parts and put it together. You know? Yeah. So what is the trigger pull on that? I think you're testing it. I, Over, can't, oh. I can't measure it. Over travel. It's too high. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's too, wow. it's too high. I think, the, I think the gauge goes up to 15 pounds or something like wow. that. Wow. Okay. So how does the trigger, like, uh, if you can, you know, just tell us what you think about the trigger on it since we can't. <laughs> That means that means it's horrible. <laughs> the worst. It, it is. It, I mean, yeah. and Ken, uh, for, for, for folks out there, Ken will test the the triggers on whatever he pulls up. I don't have a uh, trigger pull tester thingy here. I do, but it's but yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, the, one of the things about this um, shotgun is that it has a really um, short pull. It's not real long like your normal bull pups. Um, but it is horribly hard. I mean, it is, it's, it's the worst, it's the worst, or I should say the heaviest trigger that, that I've ever felt. 
Oh, okay. And then what's the weight on that feel like? Does it feel heavy? Is it light? It looks like a polymer. It's got a lot of polymer in it. Yeah, so it's got a lot of polymer, but I want to say that it, um, I don't know what the weight is, but it's probably at least weighs as much or more than my 308 does. Wow. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's not, it's not light because everything, everything inside of it is all steel. Oh, okay. So it's got kind of so, a polymer shell. That's it. Yeah. Every, every, yeah, everything else in it is basically a, um, you know, similar to a Mossberg 500 um, action and, and everything else. Um, Plus you have a D-cell flashlight on top. With, yeah. That's a heavy, you know, D-cell battery, so, yeah. So. Okay, someone wants it's, to know, can, it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, someone wants to know, Ken, is there a reason why the pistol grip is not located in the center of gravity in its longitudinal position, like in uh, the FAMAS? Uh, I guess Papoom, they're saying. I live in Arizona. Can can this this person wants to know if you need interns? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're in Arizona. I don't know if we mentioned that. You're you're based in Arizona. Yeah, they they can always send me send me an email. Um, and you know there there are opportunity opportunities sometimes. So yeah. you know. There's, cool. there's always possibilities. Yeah, that's cool. You know, if you're the, if the, if someone out there really appreciates this stuff or whatever, if you're really good, you got to get checked out and all that. But yeah, uh, that's had, good uh, to know. Hey, um, working for me. Um, he was going to ASU, um, and so he came in and did uh, did an internship with me, and uh, he's now working up at Ruger. So oh. um, he, he's doing a, he's doing an internship up at Ruger right now, and then he'll be done ship, and then he'll come finish his classes. He he may or may not come back and uh, and do some more work for me. I'm not sure yet. We haven't we haven't discussed that yet. Oh, that's cool. And then on the question of the uh, pistol grip location, what do you think about that? So it it all depends on. Can what you show the, that? Is, can you show that one again? Yeah. Go ahead. So the the set the the balance point again is still way rear heavy. Um, it's the I imagine if you put some some loaded rounds in it, it'll it'll balance out a little bit more um, because you'll have um, into this section here. Um, but it is the balance point is still very rearward uh, heavy. Yeah, and then that looks like a single tube feed. How many Correct. rounds does that hold? Um, I want to. I'm not quite sure, but at least at least four, maybe five. I'm not sure. Four or five rounds. Okay. So that doesn't give you like yep. any extra round advantage, like some of the the uh, shotgun bullpups that are out there today. Today, no, that's correct. Yeah, but it gives you it gives you a size advantage when you want to put it in the trunk of your car or or in the seat next to you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks really cool. So, is that the only twelve gauge that you have? Do you want to like stick on? Okay, no. go ahead. What what other? Yeah, I, I I've got another okay. one. Let me let me go grab. Yeah. It. So I mean, so here we can stick on twelve gauges because you've got a, a twelve gauge bullpup, right, Walter? Yeah. Well, I got the KSG. Right. Okay. So while Ken is getting that, I think I also have a KSG here. What do you yeah. think? What do you think about? Because Walter, let's explain your position on this. Uh, are you a bullpup guy or not? Do you? It depends. I mean, I'm. You know, there's certain ones that I really. The Steyr, I love. I like the Steyr. It's a classic design. Um, oh, okay, so you like it for the history and the. Well, you know, I'm not into injection molded plastic as much as some people are. <laughs> I get turned off by a plastic shell. At fourteen hundred dollars, it just doesn't get me excited. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. No, I, I understand. What, that's valid. I mean, that you know, that's a that's an aesthetic thing, and this and it's probably a functional thing behind it as well. Right. Um, right I know that's right. the difference with, like, for example, the M seventeen S from K and M versus other bullpups out there, right, Ken? That's correct. I mean, when I see when I see an action, say that they just drop into a plastic shell, and they call it something something innovative or something like that. Well, you know, the, the injection molding is innovative, but I don't see it, uh, you know. Um, yeah. So are you discussing like kits here or are you just talking no, in general? I mean, okay. some, of the, some of the manufacturers, I mean, actions are actions, you know, you, it's a, based on an AR-180 or based on an AR-15 or an AK. 
but uh, how much of it is innovative versus just that action dropped into another shell? So, All right. Okay. What um, what twelve gauge do you have there, Ken? Oh. Oh, let's see. Okay, let me, so let's uh, let me see. I'm gonna. You have to let me see. I'll I'll click on your screen so folks can see it. Let me let me oh, test Oh, that's right. now. Oh my God, this I've definitely seen in a movie. I know that. That's a uh, is that a Franchi or something like that or? Um, no, you'll never guess. This is this from the eighties. This is from the eighties, right? Um, uh, this was um started manufacturing in uh, eighty five. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. that's a is that a, a a Mossberg action in a? That that's right. This this is a this is a Mossberg, yeah. um, bullpup, and they. Okay. They sold these as complete rifles, and they also sold them as kits. So you could take your 500 and drop your 500 directly into this. So that's oh. what I was talking about. The 500 actually just dropped into a mold. Yeah. Okay. So that's been going on for yeah. a while because I know there's a few kits out there like that. Um, I think you've got uh, Bullpup Unlimited makes one. Yep. I'm trying I'm to think. Bull. Yeah. But the, this, but this this came this one came from the factory like this or the um or the factory sold the kit so this is this is not an aftermarket kit this was a kit built by mossberg or the rifle sold like this by mossberg okay so what do you think about this first of all how long have you had this um i've had this one probably only a couple years okay so what do you think about it as you know um do you like it as a Actual shooting gun? Do you like it as a twelve gauge? No, it's a piece of junk. Oh, really? <laughs> it's it's ugly. It's ugly, <laughs> but it's it's a bullpup and it's it's a piece of history. Yeah. Now I, I it looks like it's got a nice uh, like buff like a pad nice pad back there. How many well, how many can this hold? How many rounds? How many shells? Um, I want to say this one will hold six. Um, because it, because it doesn't have an extended, um, you know, you've got from here, here to here. So yeah, one, two, five probably six. six. Yep, five to six. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I ask is I'm sure some people. I know for me, being like on the newer side of getting into these, like what I first got into here was the you know the KSG. This is I've had this KSG for like. I'm gonna say about five years or something like that. It's got some modifications. I put a shell deflector on there. You know, um, the big reason why I got into this is because it's got two tubes. It's so the so the capacity is way up on this, depending on whether you used a little mini shot shells or yeah. you use regular. You get twenty four yeah. minis. Of yeah, that. yeah. You can go. Yeah, you can go from twelve without having. I think that's without having one uh, in the chamber all the way up to twenty four or twenty five. Yeah you know, with the minis, and I've done that. So, what looks like Ken's doing the trigger pull. Oh, it's gotta be horrendous. It's got a really long travel. Eleven. Almost 12. Wow, okay. 12, okay. Yeah. okay. 11, 11, 15, so one more and it would have been yeah. 12. Yeah, wow. Yep. But it's got a really long travel, if you look. <laughs> yeah, come on, I mean, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so yeah, that's the big exactly. thing. That's the big complaint that a lot of people had about bullpups, right? Why a lot of folks moved away from bullpups because of those squishy triggers and just the whole. I mean, and they weren't super. Like honestly, to me, what you're holding looks attractive to me. But beauty's in the eye oh, of the beholder. Hey, we gotta but talk. I, Look at that box yeah. on top, man. It's yeah, like, but I used to see these things in magazines when I was a kid, like Popular Science and Popular Mechanics magazines that my dad has, and it's like maybe it's nostalgia for that, me or something. That's corporate. That's corporate uh, <laughs> northeastern, no sense of what they're doing. Gun. My opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just ugly. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. So Papoon says he expected over travel. So that's actually not bad compared to the other one I see in the uh, behind the scenes. But look, okay, I know you think that looks ugly, but it's just like, um, remember the old telephones? What did they make those telephones out of? Bakelite. I think it's, yeah, Bakelite. 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 Yeah, yeah, those that, were. I'm, I'm that, sure that this handle is Bakelite, this foregrip huh. area. 
Right. Well, I'm, okay. sure, I'm, I'm sure it's Bakelite. Yeah, I mean, that might seem that might seem ugly to someone, and definitely the designs today are better. I mean, obviously, you've got more CAD, design, you know, computer-aided design and stuff like that going on, but I don't know. I find, like, the, the looks of those seem nostalgic to me. You know, I'm not arguing the ugly point, but yeah, sometimes but something could be so ugly, it's cute. Well, like a all, puppy. What's all this for? You know, on, this, on the front <laughs> section, what, what, what is all that for? What is it? Is that for, like, a flashlight? I is have like no a, idea. Is it like a guard of some sort? I mean, okay, there's okay. You've got holes in the bottom there. Is that? Um, yeah, I th I think those were aftermarket. I think somebody popped those in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so maybe those are just molding. But look how look how wide the hand guard is. It's like, yeah, it's it's huge. Yeah, I mean, is I barely it, get my hand around it. Is it like King Kong Bundy's gun or something? I mean, what? The <laughs> yep, yeah. it is. Okay, so you guys still yeah, the design is not not so great. Um, like, so, so do you have a KSG, Ken? No, I don't. Okay. So Walter and I, I don't know, uh, you have the, what, did you have a bullpup unlimited kit there also? Yeah, I've got, a, I've yeah. got a kit. You can talk about the, the KSG. Yeah. I'll go grab So it. we'll talk about the KSG. Walter, what do you think about your KSG? My KSG worked right out of the box. Little rounds, big rounds, no problem. How long ago did you get yours? Um, it's probably working on two years ago. Two years. Okay. Did you yeah. overpay for it? What? What? Because I know no, there was a time. No, no, I didn't. I couldn't get it when they were overpriced. So I. Okay. When they became available and they were everywhere again, I think I paid like six fifty seven something like that. Okay, that's decent. But to me, that's not bad. You yeah. Know, considering what it is, you know. Yeah. I mean, right now you can get those for like somewhere be like six yeah. six fifty. So I think in stores I've seen them. The more ex the most expensive I see them in stores nowadays is about eight hundred bucks. Back when I got this during the fire Armageddon, this was a lot more than that. I think this was like over twelve or something like that. And you could you couldn't find them. That's the no, thing. No, yeah, that's yeah. You couldn't find them. And I never I never had any problems with this. Um, I did have the thing. There's an infamous video with Mac from military, which stands for Military Arms Channel, obviously, you know, where he got a lot of nicks. And I also got, I don't think anyone could see that on my wrist, but I, I got a nick on my wrist as well in the beginning. I don't know if anyone could see it. From so that's why I got the shell deflector, but that goes away. Did you have that nick, that nicking problem of the uh, the rims of the shell casings smacking your, ri your wrist? Uh, I don't remember, I don't think so. Okay. I, all I know is after I shot 24 mini shells, I was in a cloud of smoke. I had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. It was right. awesome. Yeah. Now the thing for me, like I really, this is probably, this is probably in the category of my favorite gun from Caltech, just because it works so well. I like the, you know, you can switch it, you can switch the right. tubes and all that kind of stuff. It's relatively lightweight for everything that you can get into it. You know, on mine, you'll notice I've got mine set up for the Salvo 12 right, from right. Silent Circo. So but you it's, can put a suppressor it's, it's, on there. It's all business for the most part. It's not, it's not plastic just to have plastic on it, you know. It's, yeah. Or to have stuff you don't need. It's pretty much, it's all there. I, you know, anything yeah. else, you know. I think it's very functional. I know in the beginning there was a lot of th there were people who really bought these in the beginning and they genuinely had problems. And yeah. I know it had a bad reputation in the beginning. Um, I guess Caltech addressed that. That happens sometimes. I mean, this is the thing about Caltech. You know, they 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 uh, they come up with very innovative things. They put them out there. Sometimes they're not fully baked in in the beginning. Can we say that? I uh, I ordered one for a for a customer person, mm -hmm. and he got it, and it had a little bitty mark in the Parkerizing. I mean, I wouldn't even have worried about it. That's that's just me. Mm -hmm. But he was like all worried about it. He sent it back to Caltech, and then we parked the whole gun for nothing. Yeah. That is one. That is one good thing about them. You know, if if when you send things back to them, they'll they'll do stuff like that. They'll even upgrade them. Like if I um if you send this, if you send if you have an older version like a Gen One or something, and you send it to Caltech, they're gonna upgrade it for you. They they do have like you know when it comes to that kind of stuff, they're really good with it. I know there were some bad things out there. There's a whole lot of drama or whatever. We don't have to bring that up unless anyone wants to. There's variations of these. My favorite variation of this, other than the regular um, the regular shotgun here, is they have a, an SBS short barrel yeah, shotgun yeah, yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that is that is really cool. And if you want to get one of those, you can just order those directly from Caltech. I hear. Then the crazy the cra on the crazy side of Caltech, um, this year at Shot Show they came out with what is it a twenty five inch barrel? Yeah, it's like 
it's really it will take you forever <laughs> and i'm not sure that like takes away from the tactical like if, if you're going for it for tactical i don't really know why you would need like a like a really long barrel plus longer tubes that's got to be super heavy i don't see anyone going out like going in the woods hunting with their buddies hunting pheasant or whatever with a 25 well, inch barrel most places have legal limits on the number of rounds you can shoot when you're bird hunting so you can't use it anyways so. yeah so that's a little crazy i'm not sure what's up with that um are they really could... are they really selling them and shipping them or do they i don't even think they have them listed do they i don't let me see i can look on their website i don't know anyone that has one it's so batshit crazy to me personally you know i just think like why <laughs> Why? Yeah. You know, I think they just basically did it uh, as like, well, maybe, let's do something really cool maybe for shot show. You, maybe it gets them into some uh, some markets where they have to have more barrel length. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that's look. I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't see it on the website. I think that the KSG is really like a now. Does Does anyone out there have the Utahs? Ken, do you have a Utahs? No, I've shot one, but I don't. I don't have one. Okay, I almost, I almost bought one before I bought the KSG. I'm glad I didn't actually. Yeah, don't. That's like the worst bullpup shotgun, if and not that, like one of the worst guns I've ever. I've and the ever reason dealt I was, with. the reason I was considering because it was available then, versus the other one that wasn't so much available. So yeah, I've never seen a Utah's work. As a matter of fact, I've seen them blow up in people's hands. Oh wow. Yeah, or I've seen them like just um, you know shoot without you pulling the trigger. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. No. Yeah, I've seen some really crazy things. Um, yeah, I know my friend Daryl from uh, Tactical Existence has, you know, he's got uh, some video of that, which I'm actually in. That's like probably the worst I've seen. W what do you think, Ken? Um, yeah, you you can't you can't be dealing with any plastic stuff in guns, and that's and that's what I hear that on that that Utah said originally when they very first started shipping them, they had some plastic parts in there, and the plastic parts weren't holding up. And then yeah. you've got issues. Right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if anyone out there has the Utahs, like a, a recent one, and it's gotten any better. Let us know, you know, what you think about the Utahs if you have one. I know that there are people for some reason that want them, but I would – I don't know. I'm kind of like – that's one thing I would say stay, stay away from. Um, I, I wouldn't own one of those at all. What's that? The Utahs. Us. No. Yeah. So, and then you know, in the before we go to to the gun that Ken has. Now we were talking about the KSG, and this is in the news right now. You, well, I don't know if it's in the news, but I saw, I got like a, um, I got an email. There's a sale going on right now from Standard Manufacturing that makes the DP12. Are you guys familiar with the DP12? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't shot one. Yeah. Now the, Yeah. Now the, now this is this is a bigger, bulkier gun, as you can see. This is pretty robust. Um, it's relatively uh, it's a relatively tough gun. It also has you know it has two barrels and two tubes, two feeding tubes. So you can pump this once and pull the trigger twice. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's cool. We actually torture tested one of these, and I have a video on it. And I think what we did was we 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 hit it up with some uh, hog grease from Ran CLP. Another shameless plug. For Ram yeah. CLP that uh, sponsors the channel, of course, but we hit it up with hog grease. And I actually, I think I had, was it four guys, Lola? We basically ran, I don't know any other good way to say this, so please forgive me for what I'm about to say. We ran a train on this gun. <laughs> so, you know, like we were, so in other words, one guy, someone would load it and one guy would go shoot it and, and empty both feeding tubes, and then someone else would load it, and then another guy. We just went through until everyone was tired, so we just kept running this gun. And I think we got to, like, about 700 rounds before we had an issue, which basically, um, when we pulled the trigger, it was shooting twice. Oh, both it. barrels so, at once? Yes. Yeah, it was shooting both barrels. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, to me, that that's obviously a failure, so we, we stopped. And then we sent it back to them. This particular one is the one that we're TNEing, and they sent us back to uh, they sent it back to us within a week. It seems somehow we bent a, a feeding tube in there, and so that's what they say was causing the problem. But you know, I think that's pretty tough because that was like in about an I'm going to say it's like 45 minutes to an hour. So if you're let's say in the zombie apocalypse, nobody's going to shoot that much. Yeah, and if when you get to the 700 <laughs> zombie. <laughs> And you still have zombies coming at you. You might just like drop everything. Go, go ahead. Just take me. Run, Forrest, run. 
Yeah, so it's pretty tough. It's heavier, but here's the reason why. And, and you know, I, I honestly do think this is cool. And in a place like Connecticut, for example, in Connecticut, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, you can't buy an AR-15 anymore. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think you can only buy um, pre-ban AR-15. So new, like, so people in Connecticut can't go into a store and get an AR-15 that is in a pre-ban, which I think has pushed up the price of pre-bans. That gets... Yeah, like, gets that, crazy. Like, like that old Bushmaster of mine. That's that's yeah. a desirable one up there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now if you want to take Joe Biden's advice and you live in Connecticut and you can't have an AR-15, this is perfect because you can walk in to any store, including standard, and, and just like buy one of these, I mean, and have like some serious firepower to keep in the house. So yeah. the thing, the reason though why I bring this up, other than the fact that it's a bullpup and in the same category with the KSG kind of, is that Standard right now has a deal going on where if you have a KSG and you send it <laughs> and you send the KSG to them, they'll take six hundred dollars because this is like thirteen hundred dollars. KSG on average is somewhere between six and um, eight hundred bucks at the most, so they will take six hundred bucks off the um, the um, DP twelve. And you can buy a DP12 for 800 bucks from them. So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, not my business plan, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I'm like, I, I'm curious. First of all, why can't we just have all? <laughs> you know, I would want to have everything. Yeah, I know, have a hard, I, unless something's horribly bad, which I have a couple of them. I have a hard mm -hmm. time getting rid of stuff. So, yeah. Well, that's. I think that's part of it that I wonder. I don't know if Ken wants to weigh in on this, but I, I wonder like. Standard is actually getting into the business of owning KSGs. I don't know how many. I put up a thing to find out before I did this video how many folks out there would actually trade in their KSGs. I wouldn't trade in mine. It, I, I'm fine having both. I think they're tools and they serve completely different uh, functions and purposes. But and so I wouldn't trade mine in. I'm just wondering, like, why Standard would want to get into the business of owning KSGs? Because what do you do yeah. with them? <laughs> It's just marketing is all that it is. Yeah. They're, you know, if, if they get them, they're probably just going to turn turn them and sell them or them. take them down to the, the local gun shop and, you know, lose a couple hundred dollars on them. It, put them on it's eBay. Just, I mean, I'll put them on yeah. a gun broker. Yeah. Gun broker. It, it's, it's all, for, it's all marketing. Yeah. You think it's a, do you think it's a good, it's probably, it's probably not a bad marketing thing. I don't know how many other people shared it out there other than me though. I know when I saw it, I was like, what? <laughs> it's kind so, of a paper, to me, it's kind of a paperwork nightmare, but. You know, that's just me. Yeah, I'm curious to see. I know that on, on the post that I did, I didn't see anyone that said that they would trade in the KSG. Oh, so. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had people ask, you know, to for trades, you know, hey, will you take this and send me one of your rifles and some cash? And uh, I'm not in the business of, of trading, no. trading firearms for firearms. It usually um, doesn't you know, work out because most people's, what they call their guns is good condition. It shows up and it's like, Oh dear. Yep. You know. Yeah. 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 I, I just I just tell people if if you really want one and you have one that you're looking to sell or trade, just sell and trade it and then when you got enough money, yeah. then come on back. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're all for trading. Like in the on a personal person to person. I yeah. think as businesses yeah. it's yep. not so easy. Yeah. You, I mean, I understand where people are coming from that they want to barter and trade things with you. But honestly, I, what they have to do is understand that as a business you've put a lot of money into producing these guns. I mean you know, it, like I think folks have a mindset out there that if you sell a gun for 500 bucks or let's say you sell it for a thousand bucks, that it maybe costs you 500 bucks to make and you're making 500 bucks profit. Both of you guys are manufacturers. Is that true? No. Um, not, not, not necessarily. Always. Not, not, not always. always. Not always. No. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm good. No, I was going to say, like, you know, there's that. I know from the retail point of view, a lot of times when people sell guns at retail, they may be making 50 bucks on that gun, maybe 100 if they're lucky. Uh, I, I beg to differ. Well, maybe maybe on some used guns, mm -hmm. but I I know what the markup is for, for gun stores. Okay. Because you know, I, I deal with gun stores, and I know what the markup is for distributors because, you know, I'm starting to, to deal with them now, too. So okay. I, I know what I know what their markups is, markups are, and it's it all depends on the sale price. All right. So they're they're making they're making a percentage on on that sale price. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's move on from that. What what what, what um twelve gauge do you bring? Let's see it. So this is the kit. Okay. Um, this is uh. um by Bullpup Unlimited. 
Um, and this is a Mossberg 500 kit. Um, it's basically a, a plastic shell um, that you take your existing firearm and you take off the, the butt stock and you throw it in the kit and you now have a bullpup standard shotgun. You can take your shotgun that you have at home and turn it into this bullpup. It's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty cool concept. Um, they, it, it works well, you know, it, it's going to work in this kit. So, yeah. So what did you say? This is a Mossberg one you have, right? Yeah, this is the, this is the Mossberg 500 kit. They now have, um, for a couple, they've got the Mossberg they and they've, Remington. They've got a, they've got, I think a Remington one now too. Yeah. Um, did you, did you put this but, kit together yourself? We should probably have that kit discussion. Has anyone put together a kit bullpup? Uh, did you put, so, mm -hmm. so all, all of the bullpup unlimited, they all come as kits. So if you, if you want one of these, you have to build it as a kit. They don't sell complete firearms. They only sell the kits. Um, this kit went together really easy. Just a matter of a couple screws and, and it's together. Yeah, I, I think um, I can't remember, honestly, if it was a Mossberg or a Remington that I've done a video. The, the thing about this that's cool is you can get like an old Remington, old Mossberg or whatever. You, you know, you don't even need everything. You can get one that's yeah. in pieces and you oh, can you, put it together. And you could stick a fugly gun in there and it'll still look all right. Yeah, yeah. I bought I bought this one off Gun Broker for one hundred dollars. Not the kit, but the oh the whole thing, the shotgun, the shotgun. Oh, the shotgun. Uh huh. The shotgun and it was a rust bucket i mean it was a trunk gun it was all beat up and you can't even tell yeah it looks good that this was an old rust bucket i mean you if you if you look at the barrel you probably can't see it much but it, you know there's there's yeah. some pitting and stuff on the barrel um mm -hmm. but you, it, you can it always matter. hit it with a little you can always hit it with a little spray paint and boom you're done yeah yep yeah, on so, a shot, it's it's a it's a if you want it like an entry level into bullpups, that's a really afford. Because what does the kit cost? I've done a video on this before because I think I saw Bullpup Unlimited at the bullpup convention. That's now defunct. Yeah, you know, which I'm just kind of sad about. But um, it's yeah, not I, expensive I, kit, right? No, they're I think they're a couple hundred dollars. Um, I don't I don't remember. I got this one. She's a long time ago. This was one of the very first kits that they rolled out with. Cause I, I knew, uh, you know, JJ and when he was coming out with it, we, we would talk yeah. all the time on the phone and he'd ask me questions about linkage bars and <laughs> this and that. And, um, so I would, I was able to get one of the first ones that, that rolled out. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think it's I, a I good way to go. Remember. It's a good way to go. If you want to get entry level with the kit, um, you might have to do some things with some other kits. This kit I did do myself. I bought an old gun, like you're saying, put it all together. It was really easy. Everything worked. I mean, the like I actually did a versus video of the Bullpup Unlimited versus the KSG. And honestly, I mean, I hate to say it, but I would take the KSG just because you've got two tubes and all that kind of stuff going on. But, but you know, it's a completely different gun, um, different price point and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you it's know. a it's a it's a totally di totally different class. The the KSG yeah. is a full -on firearm where this is a kit, and you know this is if you have a shotgun lying around in your uh, in your closet or underneath your bed and you want to turn it into a bullpup, you can. Yeah, you can go where, bullpup. Where yeah, and you yep. get the benefit, right? You do get the bullpup benefit of this, where it changes the whole balance, and you know you have a little bit more behind than you do forward, so you can if you're in a vehicle and all that kind yeah. of stuff that goes. And, and it uses a standard AR-15 pistol grip, so if you want to put on a different pistol grip, you can. Yeah. I was going to yeah. ask you about that. Yeah. 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 That's a big difference over the KSG. I think when we did that Versus video, we talked about it because with the KSG, if you look at it, it's got the proprietary, which is, you know, nice, good looking. This, I think they call the Gator grip. Um, and that's cool, but you can't, you can't change that out to anything. You know, you can't make it more comfortable or anything like that. Right. If and that's it, what and you it, wanted. Yeah. And it uses a standard, you know, AR-15 controls for a selector switch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, you don't have to learn anything new on, on this except for, you know, your, your release button is back here for yeah. when you want to yeah. chamber. Yeah. I'm not against kits. Walter, what do you think about kits? You ever did a kit? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh, are you against them? You... No, no. Well, I mean, it has its place. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody doesn't have money for a KSG or right. a, a DP12. So, 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, so there's different kind of kits out there. Can you want to talk about some? I don't have I don't have a kit, but I know there. What is it? The ZK22, which is from Atlas. 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 Yeah, yeah. Atlas. Um, Joe Mo has the um, a ZK22. I'm not sure if they're really readily available out there. I yeah, know they are. Some went out. Okay, they are. All right. They are. I I have I have one of those kits. Okay. Did you build it into a gun? Um, somebody else um, built it into a, a gun. Basically, took the shell and put it on, and then yeah. gave then gave it to me. Okay. So, what do you think about that? I don't know if you have one there with you. I I, I do. Um, okay, cool. I haven't I haven't shot it, um, but but I do have one. I can go. Yeah. What's the What's the poundage we're getting on the Bullpup Unlimited? So this is all dependent on your host firearm that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, so. And it's got a safety built on the built in the trigger. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it's hard to hard to measure. It won't it won't measure on the on the gauge, but it's it's pretty it's pretty stout. Let me try and see if I can measure it again. Yeah, see it. Fifteen. Over. Uh, it went over. It blew the. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's it, and it like I say it, it all depends on your on your host um, firearm too um what it's gonna do but it, it's 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 not it's not a great trigger it's it's mushy because of the the linkage yeah um, now are they are they i've never done a trigger upgrade for a mossberg or a remington yeah, i'm assuming there are are there no i don't i don't know i don't oh. know that there are and and it's a and it's a shotgun you know most um yeah you know anybody that you talk to is going to tell you oh i don't want a hair trigger on a yeah, shotgun you don't want to do that no no so, okay you know, and you know, so you know it's what, got, and you don't want to sell things like that either. Um, right. Yeah. The yeah. liability. So. So, so it's 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 got a it's got a heavy heavy trigger on it. Okay. If anyone but, wants to know what happened to my bullpup unlimited kit, we built it. We did a video. I think we had it for some time, and then I wound up selling it because I've got to sell stuff to get other stuff, to get other guns in to shoot. You know, I think that's before I met Walter. Now I <laughs> now I have access to like army guns. Army guns. <laughs> Whatever Walter has, <laughs> you know, we can get access to that as well as to be honest with you now with um, Big Daddy guns as well. I mean, I think at this point I'm at a, at a position where I could pretty much get my hands on anything. So right. if folks out there want to see me shoot something particular, let me know. Okay, is this the ZK-22? Yeah, this is a ZK-22. Okay. And it just takes your um, standard Ruger 1022 and goes right in the kit. Yeah. Now, I think that's good looking. What do you guys think about it? Yeah, no, I, I think it I think it looks good. Um, yeah. It's you know kind of futuristic, right. um, you know, like your PS ninety kind of a thing. Right. Right. Um, the the individual that put this together said it was a nightmare to put together. Really? Okay. Yeah, but I I, I don't know one hundred percent because I didn't put it together. Um, but he said it, it took it took some time and it was it was a mess. The oh wow okay yeah I haven't had a chance to build one of those. Um, I know I have done something. I think I've interviewed Joe Mo on these. They're very cool. I think I've shot a full auto version of this, which is really sweet. I mean, 22, I think it was 22. I can't remember if it was suppressed or not, but 22 full auto, beautiful. I think he famously, I think he came up with this kit. What's the? What's it's the? A, a, right, at, right at eight pounds, but it, oh. it's, a, it's, a, and it's a brand new um, 1022 that's in it. doesn't have any trigger work done on it, so I'm sure that I can get it to... To come yeah. down quite a yeah. bit. You can get that. anything. You can get anything for a 1022. Yeah, that is the truth about <laughs> yeah. 1022. That is the most versatile gun. Uh, well, let me see. Is that more versatile than an AR, the 1022? I don't know. Yeah. But go ahead. Walter. You can probably configure it more ways than you can in an AR-15. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got some um, 1022 builds. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. What you were saying? What were you saying, Ken? Um, so with, with this kit, um, you got to be careful depending on what barrel you put in it because it can be too short. I'd really want to put it, one of the uh, bull barrels in it. Um, it just, it makes it look a little bit different. Right. It's, you know, it ends up being a little bit heavier, but then you don't have to have this spacer in here in the front and it fills it out. It look, it looks a lot nicer. And then I can, you know, thread the end of it and then run my can on it. Yeah, I think what would be cool, I don't know if you've seen any of these yet, but I have one. This integral, integrally suppressed 1022 barrels. I have one from YHM that I'm going to put into a project soon. Yeah. So, so but yeah, the, the, these kits are available. Um, they're, 
um, he when he bought them, he bought two kits and then then put this one. Okay, together. so difficult to do. Have you shot this? No, I haven't shot it yet. Okay, I know I did shoot, and this belonged to Joe Mo. Like I said, he had a full auto version. <laughs> I, I don't know. I love tw I, I love twenty two. I think he did this originally on the show. If anyone remembers that, you know, there was a show way back of, of infamy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, some crazy stuff went down in that show. We won't necessarily get into it here. But I think he did it on the show because he was doing a challenge like what would be the best zombie apocalypse gun. And he said it would be, you know, a twenty two because you could carry a lot of twenty two, be really lightweight. You know, what what do you guys think about twenty two in like a you know <laughs> shit hit the fan situation? Um I always say use a 22 for a weapons upgrade. Oh. <laughs> so that they don't. You don't Explain that. It. Explain that, Walter. Uh, all it takes is one crucially placed shot, and you get the you get the saw. Okay. So what Walter's yeah. not trying to get into here not too deeply, I guess well, I'll say do. it. Go ahead. A suppressed 22 is like you don't need anything bigger in an urban environment. Yeah, I think a 22 is pretty effective. I mean, I think 22s kill the most people in, in you know. 22 and 25 caliber kill more people than any other calibers. Yeah, so if, if people think that yep. it's not effective, I mean, you know, I, I guess maybe if you're going up against body armor and stuff like that, I don't know yeah, how but much look of that. At, remember, there's always open spots. Always. Yeah. Always open spots. Yeah. When you get shot in the neck with a 22, you're done. Yeah, I mean, and where I live in the country, I've got guys that have like Bubba before their nicknames, like my buddy Bubba Roadkill. Uh, Bubba Roadkill, that's his nickname, <laughs> and those guys are like surgeons with twenty twos. It's amazing. Well, well, that's that's the main that's the main poaching weapon. Yeah, yeah, twenty two. I mean, it's quiet. Even when I'm suppressed, it's still quiet. Yeah, no. yeah. You know, you can get subsonic relatively easy. Um, there's so many things. I got to use the potator. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> true, true. You know, um, you know, it's not it's not non NFA yet, but okay. I'm pretty sure the ATF says that is a suppressor. A potator? <laughs> yeah, you got you have to get a you know you have to get a tax stamp for that, Walter. Okay. Even if it fall, if it, even if it falls on the muzzle end of the the firearm. Oh, oh yeah, accidentally. <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. You put, well, I, I don't know. How about a grapefruit? A grapefruit. I'm pretty sure you good. can use the potato and you can shoulder it, but I don't hey, know. That, that, that could be a video, Hank. <laughs> what? Fruits for suppressors. Fruits for suppressors. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, we know. gotta do it. Grapefruit, you're, man. A big as, old, big old pink grapefruit. No, we yeah, can have you're some. A you're a manufacturer, so as long as you're there, we can. We can squeeze much it do down it. afterwards <laughs> and make some vodka with it and have a drink. You know? Yeah. You you're a manufacturer. As long as you're there, I'm down to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Almost anything. Almost. I'm not gonna say definitely anything. Okay. So um, I think there's other kits like this that look similar, right? To the ZK22. Um. I think I'm, not, I'm, some, I'm yeah, not 100% sure. There's, a, there's another bullpup design out there, if I remember correctly. It's, it's more of a straighter line kind of design. That's yeah. been around kind of for a long time. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show, since we're on 22s, this is the G22. And I did borrow this from Walter. That's why it's not in his studio. <laughs> it's not in his place. I brought This is from Walther, Walther, the company. So you guys can see that. It's from Walther, the G22. Um, and I borrowed it from Walter, so that's kind of confusing, I know. And uh, what do we think about this? Well, when I bought that, I was very disappointed with it because it wouldn't shoot certain ammo. Okay. It was kind of ammo particular. It liked right. better ammo. Yeah, ammo it's, so, so you're saying it was really finicky. I think we did shoot this, but we, I haven't done a video. That's why I borrowed it, so we can do a video. One of the things I like is you can carry your backup magazine yeah. right there. You know, right. and then the um, the eject is right here to eject oh, the, the magazine. And, and it'll go left to right. Yeah. Oh, so this is that why you got this? Because you can use this as a lefty? Yeah, you can go left to right with it, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I it's wanted, not... what I really wanted to do was I wanted to thread the end and put a can on it. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, it's not threaded, right? No. But but yeah. when it when it wouldn't digest certain ammo, I was like, I don't know if I want to waste my time with it. So yeah, this is very, it's very finicky. I'm going to, I will do a video for anyone who wants to see. I'll do a video on this. That's why I borrowed it from Walter. So we're going to, we're going to definitely do a video on it. Uh, looks wise, I think the ZK22 is actually better looking than this. Yeah. But these are affordable. I think you can get these for a couple hundred bucks. They're still out there. Yeah. One thing that did happen was if you go back to the front of that, 
Okay. Go back. See yeah. those missing panels? Right. Okay. They, yes, they, I do. They, they just fell out. Yeah. Oh, those. Okay. <laughs> they fell out, and I was like, yeah. I lost them. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Usually, Walther makes really Walther makes nice stuff. I'm not sure. Do you know Do you know the history behind this gun, Walter? Not no. No. Okay. So we don't know the history of it. I like 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 22. What I like about 22 in a bullpup. So you get the you get the uh, bullpup things kind of. The balance on this is a little bit weird. But you know, you get that, and then you also get very lightweight. What do you think, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've never handled one of those, so I'm not I'm not familiar with them. Um, what What are the panels up there for? Are they just for coloration for a two tone look? Is that all those panels are for? The ones that fell out? I think that's all they were. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and probably these ones here can move over. It looks like they can be easily. I don't want to take them out, and then we lose don't more move panels. Up. Yeah. Don't okay. Lose them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we don't want to lose any more. But like Walter said, this does have controls on both sides. So you've got controls on both sides and uh, the ejection. Can you swap the ejection? It doesn't look – oh, yeah, you can yeah, take out can. the ejection panel from yeah, on this side it. and you can flip it around to that side. So it is – it's relatively ambi. The charging is on is – on, is on the uh, left-hand side, though. Yeah, but it'll, it'll go the other way, too. So. Oh, oh yes, yeah, you, you can change that panel as well. So, yeah, if you're looking for something MB-22, like maybe like an apocalypse thing, there you go. I think the, the things in the ZK-22 and those other kits are probably better looking. And then based off of a 1022, you can get a lot better, right, Ken? Yeah, yep, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, the balance, and the balance on that looks good. The balance, the balance is, pretty, is pretty good on it. Yeah. And, you know, charging handle is on both sides, so it, it's a, you know, ambi charging handle. Um, but the deflector on the other side, if you, if you put the deflector on, it deflects down, from what I'm told. Um, so you won't get it in the face. So you can yeah. shoot this from, from both sides. Yeah. I think anything that's built off of a 1022 platform, you, you, you know, you can, you can do a lot with that because as we said, there's a lot of good parts out there. There's barrel, all kinds of different barrels, triggers, yep. all that stuff. I mean, you can, you can practically build a 1022 from scratch. You don't even have yeah. to buy one from Ruger. Yeah. You don't have to buy a new one. No. Yeah. And you can get a lot of cheap if you want to do a kit stuff. Like I bought, um, I, I went to a pawn shop and I just bought one that was like, it looked like it had AIDS or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for 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 like you know, I don't know, I don't know. It was like a couple of bucks. It wasn't really that expensive, and um, and I built that into a different t um, ten twenty two. But I think this is probably like a fun build that you would enjoy, and it would be practical because of the lightweight and all that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can yeah. you get can you get like triggers on a? Tw Does anyone know? Can we get those binary style triggers on a twenty two? I mean, I know I've put them in twenty twos, but can you get one for a ten twenty two? I don't. I don't think I so. I haven't seen that yet. No. Uh -uh. Oh, somebody make one of those, please. <laughs> you know, I can't think of anything that would be more fun than than that bullpup with suppressed and almost full auto. And a hundred round drum mag. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's what okay so what so what else uh, what else you got there Ken let's go on I don't know if we've got um, any so I so we've done 22 and we've done all of my shotguns right okay uh, so let's go to some other rifles you want to go to some other right like what other calibers do you have okay I have 556 and I have 308 okay cool all right so let's um, Hmm. Where do we want to start? Let's start with five five six. Okay. Um, that's the. What's Walter got there? That's the uh, Microtech. Microtech. Okay. okay. So I'll. Yep. I'll Basically. grab my Microtech. Oh, you got one too. Okay. Cool. Yeah, okay. This should be cool. Okay. So we're grabbing out the the Microtech is a clone of the Steyr Aug, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. When I bought, when I ordered this, you couldn't get a styrog. So, and when was that? What time uh, frame are we talking? Oh, uh, when the shot show was still in uh, Orlando. So oh, wow. okay, uh, it's been a few years ago, but I bought it as a as a kit. So there was the rifle, the case. You saw that kit I had. Okay. One of the knives and a sheath and four mags and and um. Yeah, so it was like two grand when I bought this thing. So mm -hmm. wow, 
So that, so that I, Microtech one was two grand. Okay. In that whole in that whole package, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you have Walter. Yours um, has the integral uh, scope on it, where oh. mine has a flat top on it. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. So is that more modern with the flat top? Or the older one? They, they, they made, it, this one's the newer, the because when they first came out, I believe they only came out with the ones that were scoped. And right. then I believe they had an option for um, a non-scoped one. Yeah, so you didn't get stuck with the scope. How is the scope on that? Well, I think I've shot that before. Yeah, I like the scope. I mean, it's, it's, a, like a, it's your basic, I think, like a four power or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I found some screws that were coming loose here. That's not good. Yeah. Um, but no, I I like it. I mean, it's quick. Once yeah, you get so used to it, you put yeah. it up, it's there. Boom, boom, boom. You get it done. You know. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it. This is not a. Uh, let's just say it's not a. Uh, we're not going to go out and shoot, do sniper work with it. So, you know, it's not really designed for that. So overall, you like the weight and everything. So now, I'm trying to understand what was going on here. Why was your Microtech more expensive? I think I've seen that, and that comes like in a whole case, and there's a knife right. and everything. Right, right. It was a whole package. Yeah. So that's probably. That drove that drove the price up because of the extra mags and the knife that came with it and all that stuff. Okay, so that makes that more of a collector's item. Yeah, that's the way they pushed it. Yeah, right, because it, it came with a Pelican case too, didn't it? Yeah, Isn't that correct, what kind of a correct. case it came in? Yeah, it was, yeah, and the foam was all cut out. I mean, it was a right, it was right. a nice 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 presentation piece. Right, um, right basically right. is what what it was, and that and that that you know they did that for marketing reasons and to, oh, okay. to sell more. Right, right. So explain. I had to, I had to wait months for it. I mean, it didn't. I ordered it, and it, I, it probably took close to a year before I got it. So, oh wow, okay. So, what should the price for that normally be? Like, if we see if what were they in the beginning, and what what are they going for nowadays? Correct me if I'm right, wrong, Ken, but they don't make these anymore, right? Microtech, That's correct. Yeah, they they they, 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 went, they 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 close their doors. They still do knives, though. Yes, but yeah, no. Which I have a, I have one of those too, but um, I think they took a. I think they just well, there was lots of reasons why Microtech wasn't making guns anymore, but I think maybe they just um, didn't figure out the market right or something. I don't I don't know. It's just well, I heard I don't know how true it is. Is how rumors start, but I heard that um, because Steyr USA was coming back in the game, oh. um, they opted to get out of it for legal reasons. Oh, I see. Okay. Because it, I mean, it is, it is so similar to the AUG. Right. It is not even funny. Yeah. Now, just, not, to, not even just to show you guys, check this out, guys. Look, look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, this yeah. is the actual, this is an actual Steyr AUG. Um, yeah, and I don't like, I don't care for that scope rail myself. Yeah, this is just like a, it's just a flat. This is probably a newer one, right, Ken? Yeah, I, yes. I'm say, this, I borrowed this. If anyone wants to know, it's not my gun. I am going to do something on the channel. This came from Big Daddy Guns. This is one of the guns that um, you know I requested from them so we can do a video, get uh, the Steyr AUG on the channel because I don't have one. Um, so I have not fired this yet. So let's talk about this. So the Microtech is the same as the Steyr AUG in, in the case of using proprietary magazines? Yes. So yes and no. Um, I believe that they, at near the end of it, they opted for um, what I believe Steyr calls their uh, their NATO package, which will use AR-15 mags. I believe at the very okay. end that they that they offered that, but yeah, all mine takes proprietary mags, so I've got a handful of uh, of mags. I even have some forty rounders that uh, in my that in, the, in that in the kit I bought. It comes with a. A five ten, a five ten, a thirty, and I think a forty. So yeah. okay. So let so let's have that discussion about the mag the the magazines. Why are companies going proprietary? Is it just easier? Does it work better with the bullpup mechanism? I have no idea why. I have no idea why anybody would go with a proprietary magazine. Hank, is is your style there? Is it take an AR mag or? Is um, it I don't. I did. You know what? I deliberately didn't bring magazines. I didn't want to like have a whole bunch of magazines all over the place. So there's a magazine well. I'm really not sure. <laughs> that is a good question that I cannot I answer right now. So there's a magazine well, and I'm not. Let me see. Um, you know what? I don't. I didn't bring any magazines because I didn't want to uh, get into that Those whole. Yeah, I didn't want to get into that. I had to bring these. This is ten bull pups. So I had to pack them up in the car and oh, drive them down oh, here. Oh, oh. Then I had to drag them in. 
It's kind of like so, me today building a Sten gun so we can do video on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't bring it. So I'm not sure which one this this one is. I will let you guys know about that later. So we don't know. Like it was just a company. The companies just decided to go proprietary, right? I guess. Maybe okay. they figured it. Why why reinvent the wheel? Just just go with what works. I guess. I don't I don't know. So what, I mean, what was, because before the Tavor, which we're going to get to uh, the, the Tavor and the X95 uh, along the line here, this, the, the Steyr Aug was what was popular, right? Is it for bullpups here in America? Yes, before the ban. Yeah. Yep. Stuff like so, that. So yeah. uh, you want to, like, tell me what's up with that, Ken. You are the resident bullpup expert, and you're in the bullpup groups what's the and other, forums Ken, and everything. Wasn't there, there was another Aussie bullpup. Or was that the not the leader? The leader wasn't a bullpup. That's right. No, the the leader the leader T two and I have one of those. Um, but right, it's right. not it's not a it's not, not a bullpup. Bull but it, it shares the triangle the triangle bolt design is something the leader. Correct. Yep. Yeah. 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 But as far as you know, during during the ban, then you know they weren't able to uh, to bring them in. Right. Um, so you weren't able to to purchase one. If you were able to purchase one, then they were outrageously in in price. And yeah, so yeah, they they got HK ish. Um, right. What are you talking about with the Steyr Augs or? Yeah, with the with the Steyr. Yep. Yeah, but why? So why were they so popular here in the first place? Like, I think before the Tavor came along, this is what like real bullpup guys had, right? Yeah, they're 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 the the pioneer almost, right. if you want to say, aside, because they aside from the they Famas were made in France, right? Those yeah. were very few and far between here too. So yeah. Well, I mean, I could tell. Like, I've never owned the the um, the FN. You know, for example, like FN has the FS two thousand. Yeah, yeah it's that's ugly. really bulky. <laughs> it's ugly. Yep, it is. Yeah. It is. I have one. We'll we'll, we'll look. Oh at yeah, that yeah. Okay, bit. good. We definitely should pull that up. So yeah. this seems like it would be a little bit lighter. It does have a, a, a decent balance. I mean, the only issue that I can tell that I would have with it is if it used a proprietary magazine, uh, which I've got to check into that. I don't think this one does, but I, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't. I think this one just uses a regular magazine because this is this is probably relatively new it looks really i don't even think this has been fired i don't know i'm not sure <laughs> that's how like if you look at the uh the muzzle device right there it looks pretty clean so i think i'm going to be the one to um, pop the cherry on this one ah go for it i like the fact that it has it's like a fold down charging handle which i noticed what you guys have also has that right yeah no so it, oh, it, it, no the mic no. fold down My no 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 the okay, no, 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 I'm sorry, head. not charging handle. No, I said the wrong the thing. Grip. Not the charging handle. The right. um, the vertical yes. grip, vertical grip, yes. yeah, vertical right, right, grip, right. pull down vertical grip, yeah. So yep. that was part of the yep. original design. Yes. Okay. Came along with one of those. I think that helps for holding and giving stability. Um, is it non-reciprocating? That's correct. Non. Okay. And and there are there are aftermarket charging handles for it too that that flip. Right. Um, there's there's two companies that that make them. And it has, and this, um, a lot like, it's, this is the, uh, the safety on this is similar to some other bullpups we have here, including the MS, M17S, right? Because it's got That's a correct. quick safety. Yep. Got a, yeah, yep. it's just cross a slide safety. Walking. Yeah, yeah, I actually like these. I know guys want their safeties to be more like an AR, but for some reason I like that. I think it's easy for me to articulate that. Um, let me see what the trigger is like. It's, it's not like the best trigger in the world, but it's not horrible either. So I don't know if I was rapid firing. It might not be as good. What, what's the trigger pull? On mine that I have, it's almost 10, 10, 10 pounds. Wow. Okay. So something else you were testing had a better trigger pull than that. I think the 10, was it the 1022 or? Yeah, the 1020, the 1022 did. But so since we're talking about the, the Microtech, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the AUG, but if you take the hammer pack out. Oh, I got to charge it to get it out. So if you take that out, it's it's all plastic. Okay, so we measured yeah. trigger pound pull at almost um, almost 10 pounds, right? Yeah, like 912 yep. or something. Yep. Look right. So I'm going to put one of these in it. Okay. Okay. What is that? <laughs> it's like this is like a magic trick. <laughs> It is. Okay, Do you so make I'm going to. Yes. Oh, okay. Because I know somebody that does trigger stuff too for these. I'm just curious. So if I take and put that in, 
Okay. So you make that you make this accessory you just showed. Yep. Okay. okay. And I'm gonna put it back in. I dropped the butt pad. Okay. I like your um you don't tread on me in the background. For anyone who's joining us, Ken could not get a lower third. This is Ken from KM Arms. I just want to remind everyone there's a link to KM Arms in the description if you guys want to see. Okay, so what's the trigger pull now? Okay. So it was almost. Sounds I'm better. Five, I'm at five. five nine. Whoa. A little over five and a half. Wow, that's a lot better. I mean, I could hear it. I could hear it. Yeah, it's it's smoother. It's it it turns it mm -hmm. into a shooter. Yeah. Um. So that only works on Microtech. Yeah, I had. Oh. I it, it used to go. Um. I used to sell them for the the augs also. Mm -hmm. Um. But the uh, Steyr changed their fire control group from what they used to be to what they are now today. Okay. And is what, is what happens is, is so all I'm doing is changing the spring pressure um, on that. What's, on what's that, that device? Uh, did you only have that one that you put in? Yeah. Well, okay. no, I got, a whole, I got a whole stack of them. Yeah. I need one. I need one. Yeah, <laughs> Walter, definitely, definitely, Walter. We, we we're gonna we'll test it. We'll get him to send us one of those so we can test it, um, and let folks know because there's probably what's out there more. Are there more Steyr Augs than Mike? Oh yeah, sure, for sure. There's yeah, a lot yeah, more, yeah. lot more Aug. But it's, what happens is, is because you basically are taking and adjusting the tensions. So this was the original one that came out, and you're changing the placement of the spring. So here's original, and then we're gonna place it in any one of these three spots. And so all you're doing is releasing some of the spring tension, and is what that does on the on the AUG is your takedown pin, uh, or I shouldn't say takedown pin, but your butt pad pin mm -hmm. doesn't have as much pressure on it. And the way that the, the butt pad pin is on the AUG, it's not like this. It's different. And so oh. this, this pin walks out. And once the pin walks out, then the butt pad falls off. And then you have an in-op firearm. Right. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't go forward and do any more development work on the AUG to, to fix that trigger. Um, just because I started, you know, manufacturing my own firearm. And um, I... I didn't want to do any more development on anybody else's triggers. So these are just the triggers. There's a couple more that, that I do work on. Okay. Um, but anybody with a, with a Microtech, an MSAR, um, I, I sell these on my website on not the KM arms, but the, the aerospace side, www.kmaerospace.com. And you can buy these and they're readily available and I ship them all the time. What do you sell them for? They're forty dollars. Okay, forty bucks on kmaerospace.com. Uh, uh, we definitely need one of those. Okay, I'll so send you we, one so that we can put it into Walters, uh, Walters, and we can test that. And I'll I'll do a video and everything. Sure. And you yeah. can put it in your you can put it in your your AUG too, and and see what happens. Oh, okay, yeah, that would that would be cool. <laughs> you know, it's not gonna blow as, as long as it doesn't... who knows? Maybe it's an auto sear. Well, <laughs> no, it's not an auto. Just, as long as Walter's there, as long yeah, it's as good. Walter's it's there, all yeah, good. It's, all, it's all good. So, okay, so let's. So, I'm going to ask both of you guys since you both have you both have the the um, the Microtech and and I've got the AUG here. Why did why were bullpup guys looking for something else? Because I want to get into like the whole Tabor thing at this point. You know, I mean, why were they looking for? Some, why did this not fit the bill? Let me see what I why I like this why I like the Steyr. Mm -hmm. It's clean. It's clean. There's not a lot of extra plastic. There's not a lot of. It's not square. It doesn't. To me, it doesn't have anything you don't need. In my opinion. Okay, so you like it for the classicness. So you weren't. So as a it, for when it comes to bull pups, the reason why you have that, you don't really feel like you needed anything else. Although you did wind up buying. I think you have a Tavor, Walter. No, I don't. No. No, you don't have a Tavor. Oh, okay. I I can't. Uh, some reason I just can't pull the trigger on them because I I go fourteen hundred bucks or whatever they are. I'm like, eh, I don't know. Doesn't do anything for me. Okay. All right. So Ken, what do you what do you what's your answer to this? Um, I think that people like the the look. You know, it's been around for for a long time. Um, and it, it fits the bill for some people. There's, 
Um, there's some aftermarket parts, you know, available for them. Um, I think I think they're cool looking. They're kind of futuristic looking still, even though they were made way back in the day, at least, you know, introduced. Um, and there there's still a lot of people that, that like the platform. I mean, it, it's a good it's a good shooter. Yeah, and there are guys out there that have them. As a matter of fact, here in Gainesville, there was actually a stand your ground um, case where a styrog was used, which that's what caught my attention about it. I was like, what? There's a stand your ground case where a guy used a styrog. The reason why it never made the news is because uh, both people involved were um, black people. So, you know, they don't they, they don't make big deals of that when that happens. But that actually, you know, I, I hate to get on the politics thing here for a second, but you know, there's people in Florida that would want to take away stand your ground. It actually, you know, saves a lot of black folks, believe it or not, whatever you hear in the news from going to jail because of stand your ground. And there's a story here in Gainesville that you can look it up. And the dude used a styrog. So it only made news locally here. And it caught my attention because I was like, what? <laughs> and yeah. uh, bec and he used a styrog and it did not get confiscated from him or anything because it was stand your ground. So. Yeah. Just an, interest, just an interesting, you know, little uh, tidbit there. But it seems you know, back, <laughs> back, back in the, back in the day, you know, this was really the the only bullpup platform really that was that was yeah. available. Right. So that, and, that's, and it, that's how it became popular. And it's not just that it's a bullpup; it's used by militaries all over the world. Right. Yeah, um, that's true. So it's thoroughly tested. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think I, I think it's cool. I've never really fired one, so I can't, you know, un unless I really get into it, I can't get deep into it. It is cool just from handling it and stuff like that. I can see where, I mean, it's not, It's it feels really, the form and everything is lightweight. It's yeah. a very small package, too. I yeah. Mean, it's not overly large or anything. And, you know, like I said, I like it because it's got clean, it's sexy. It's, it's like an FNFAL. The rifle, mm -hmm. they're sexy, right? You know, they just they look good. They, <laughs> yeah. Whoever designed it was more than just a you know function guy. He was a looks guy too. So yeah, and I've gotten some things from bullpup guys. Are like, I can't believe Hank Strange, you have never done a thing on a Steyr Aug. So I am working on it before you guys. Do I, do I need to bring mine this Sunday too? Um, uh, I don't know how many videos we're gonna do in one day. <laughs> it's gonna be the suburban's gonna be dragging the ground coming. Yeah, up. I mean, you know, it's gonna be crazy. You get, you can if you want to. I mean, I know we've got a lot of videos to do on Sunday, so and we're also gonna have 904 Outdoors is gonna be there doing videos with us as well as uh, Babyface P. So there you go. Oh. I think I think the Styrog is cool and definitely like Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame gun, right? For bull pups. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would I would say so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Very, very cool. Um, what, what? Uh, do you have any other bullpups you want to go to, Ken? What is this? What are we looking at? So this is the FS two thousand. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's like a boat. It's like a yacht. Right. It's it's an interesting firearm. Um, what is it internally? What's it based on? Is it based on something else? No, I don't believe so. Okay, because yeah. it, it, it it ejects out the front. It's got a little oh, ejection okay. chute okay. right out here, out the out the front. Yeah, just hold it up, lever. hold it up a little bit so we can see it a little better on camera. Yeah. Okay, so that right, that flap opens up. Yep. It's Keltechish. Yep, it is. And then in order to see on the inside, if you have loaded round in the chamber, it's got this little flip up oh, door plastic. Door. So that you can actually see down inside, which is nice because on the other bull pups um, that have you know forward or rear ejection, you can't see inside the chamber at all. This is a little view window, which is which is kind of nice. Yeah. So now, what magazines does this use, Ken? Um, I think this, this is steel. Um, I want to say steel, like uh, GI mags. Um, yes, I believe so. I haven't, I haven't shot this thing in a long time, but I, I believe it uses standard, standard GI mags. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've looked at buying one of these. One, I found that they're still expensive and two, it's very bulky. What do you think about it? They, they are very bulky. I mean, it, it's, they're, they're heavy, even though they're a plastic shell, it is, it is heavy. Um, and, and it is bulky. I mean, it, it's, it's really bulky. Yeah, and, and the trigger is not the trigger is, is kind of horrible from the ones. Yeah, I've, yeah. They're, they're not, um, and they're not importing these anymore either. 
They're they're not okay. they're not coming in anymore. Was yeah, it ever so, was it ever adopted by any militaries? I don't believe so. Okay. okay. What about the French? <laughs> not the French even. <laughs> the French use a FAMAS. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is there's nothing wrong with that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that why these are still expensive, Ken? Because um, there there is just something that's not coming in. So collector wise. Now now they are. Okay, so that's we're, ten. 10. We're 10, 10 pounds, a little over, a little over 10. Okay. So not the um, so worst, it, not the worst that you've, that you've trigger not, checked. Not, not, not the worst. Um, but so let's take this fire control group out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come All on. right. So far These, you failed. This is a little bit. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now if, if you look at this, that's all it looks very molded. similar. Oh yeah, it does. it's all injection molded. Yeah, and it's it's very similar to the um, the AUG fire control group. It, it looks it looks very very similar ish. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to take this one and set it aside, and I'm going to take this one. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to put this one in. Okay. Now this is a stock standard fire control group that has come to me for some rework on it. Oh, so okay, so people can send stuff into you if they if they have an FS2000, they can send it in. they can send yep. the fire just the fire control group? Yep, you send that fire control group to me. I then do a little bit of work on it. A little bit of magic. I yep. cut it in half. Wow. Okay, it's 5. So I, I just, five eight. That was that was 5 5.8, 5 so it's five and a half, five and a half pounds. That one registered at four and a half. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so I I say that it'll take it right down to that one was really light. <laughs> I I say that I that it will go down to go down to five. So that one's registered a little over four. Um, yeah. So that's a uh, that's a fifty five dollar um, trigger job. Okay, um, is that also through the um, aerospace? Aerospace, yes. Yeah, what was that again? www.kmaerospace.com. Okay. okay. And so on on this one because they made it so that it's very hard to work on. Um, in order to do do the work that I do on it, it really needs to come to me. So you just put it in a UPS or a USPS flat rate small box mailer. Comes to me. I do the work on it. I send yeah. it right back out. Usually the next day or two days at max. Yeah, it's not serialized or anything, so it's just nope. uh, yeah, it's like just nope. like any other accessory. And it's and it's totally reversible back to original. If you don't like it, I you can send it back, and I'll put the the same springs back in it, um, and you're right back to how it was on stock. So yeah. it's not it's not yeah. a permanent um, fix. They also yeah. sell um, some other stainless steel devices that that will go on the top of the um, release here and it, it makes it a little bit smoother but it does nothing for the pull people okay. ask me all the uh, I don't remember the name of it but people ask me all the time if they if mine will if mine interacts with it or can they use both and I tell them yeah you can use both but it doesn't doesn't do anything um, it, it makes it a little smoother in the stock configuration, but once I ha once you have the trigger job done on it, it you don't need that device either. Okay, I'm seeing something from Art. He says we need to stay on topic. I don't know when we got off topic. If that message is coming in late, I'm not even sure what we did. Right. But Art Art said stay on topic, guys. Psh, cracking the whip on us. So that's I guess I, I guess because he doesn't do triggers for the two that I just talked about. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry Art. Oh Art, Art just wants us to mention him. You know, <laughs> right? Art from Shooting Sight. There you go, Art from Shooting Sight. He's a, he's a good guy, and he has. You know what's cool about Art? He actually the, he came up with something where with your prescription, he has a prescription for people to shoot. See Art, I, I, I gave you a plug. You got you got to go to Shooting Sight to find out about that. So you can get like a prescription for your glasses when you're going to make a sight picture that helps give you like better aim or something like that. I need to try that out. I haven't tried it out yet. So there you go. So now the FS2000, pretty bulky. Do we think yep. it's even attractive? It's different. I, I, don't, I don't like the way that it looks. There's a lot of people that don't like the way it looks. Um, 
but that's it, why it's not for sale here still right yeah so now it's a, so now i mean it is like guys who have them out there one they can get them upgraded with you if they want to and it's kind of putting it in that you know kind of collector's thing where if you're if you're like a dyed in the wool bull pup guy it's a good you know or you're a dyed yeah, in the wool you're a dyed in the wool fn guy yeah yep yeah, if you want, yeah, and there are guys like that, right? There's guys who I've met guys who only have FN guns. Seriously, like if they if they go to the range and they have all their guns, their rifles, their pistols is only FN. Very interesting. <laughs> you know, it's like guys who only buy Gucci bags or whatever. I don't know. Well, if yeah. a guy's buying a Gucci bag, yeah. <laughs> we, we got to have a talk with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I can buy. I don't know. I don't even know brands of bags. Are there dude Gucci bags? Probably not, right? Uh, How many know. Gucci bags have you bought? <laughs> None. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't even let Lola look at Gucci bags. <laughs> you know, the other day she tried to go into a coach store and I was like, no, woman. No, no. <laughs> coach, coach store gets in the way of my gun, my gun funds. <laughs> So we didn't do that. Okay, so um, do we want to move on to the Tavor now, or do you have another? Do you have some a cool? Do you have some other cool things? Because I think I'm, I think there's folks out there who want to probably hear about the Tavor, because from, you know, the the Steyr Aug I think was like was the bullpup of choice for a lot of guys out there, even over that FS two thousand, which I think was expensive and yeah. and bulky, and you know, and the trigger, the trigger also on that. As Ken was showing you, is not the best trigger in the world. Unless you got the upgrade from Ken. I didn't even know that he did that. So now I'm going to go to the Tavor. This is mine. And I bought this Tavor years ago. I, I have like a very long, one of my first very long videos called a mud torture test where I basically had this Tavor, didn't even shoot it. And we just went out and we shot a Tavor versus an AK-47 versus a, um, a LE-6920 AR-15. And um, it's it's there for everyone to see it. They can see me trying to run around with uh, armor plating, which I couldn't do. <laughs> see an even fatter version, if you think that's possible, <laughs> of Hank Strange rolling around in the mud. <laughs> it's I don't even know why I still have that video up, but I've had this Tavor for a long time. I think this is this is a pretty decent gun. What do you think, Ken? I have one. I have one of the the original ones when they first first came out. I was uh, start starting up production on mine when these first first hit the market. Um, I saw one at the bullpup shoot um, when before they were even on the market. Um, right. Is that when back when we met probably right or before that? No, uh, that was before because I I met you the second year that I went to the the bullpup okay. shoot. Okay. Uh, first first year you weren't there then i saw you there second year and then the okay. next year after that but yeah. it's a you know obviously i don't think it's as as fine of a firearm as mine um still you got a plastic gun um can't change the pistol grip which i believe is a shame um and then you know you you look at the the trigger yeah, so you've got a reg you've got a regular trigger in yours right yep I, yep okay. this is a standard standard trigger didn't even register. No, really? Do that again. Yeah, okay, let's. So. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Wow, ten. Gage, so that's just as bad. That's just lie. as bad, huh? Gauge doesn't lie. Yeah, that's just as bad as the FS two thousand. I think. Right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. that's it's 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 horrible, and that's what I that's what I tell people. Okay, you've got a a firearm that has a trigger pull of eight to twelve pounds, and and you don't know where it is i mean you can get a tavor that that's eight pounds you can even get them i think the x95 comes with a with an upgraded pack in it or you can put another trigger pack in it but i haven't seen them go below five pounds and it does nothing for the take up the travel none of that is mitigated from from everything that i've been able to feel and, and touch as far right. as an upgraded yeah. trigger so now on mine, I do have on this, we were talking about art and the shooting sight trigger. That's what's actually in mine. I have the shooting sight trigger pack in there. I, and, I, and I'd say it is better. I can't remember the poundage. You probably have to go look at a video if I'm not even sure if we put that in the video. So I can you know find out sometime in the future. And then the reason why mine looks like all even more futuristic and everything, it has some Midwest, you know, Midwest um, industries, industries, furniture on there. 
I think this is called, I forgot what the name of it is, like the Razor Gator back, some, you know, one of those things. I can't remember. It's been a long time, but I, I mean, it, it's to me more convenient for putting the red dot and all that kind of stuff on there. I think overall, and, and of course, I've got a uh, Surefire adapter here from uh, Muzzle Break so that you can drop a Surefire, a 30, like for the, uh, the, I think I have a 30 cal suppressor. From Surefire, so you can drop that on there and shoot it suppressed. Um, I've got other things like I've got the Midwest Industries cover for the port. These do get very gassy, right? They do. Yeah. So um, I think you and I think you can you can do a little bit. You can switch this around a little bit. I know Walter is concerned about that. You can switch a couple of things on this. Yeah. You know, you can switch your you can switch your charging handle. Um, to the other side, I believe. Is that right, Ken? Um, you can. Yeah. Um, actually, on this one, I don't believe you can. On on mine, I don't think you can. Oh, okay. Because I th I believe that you can on this one. I'm I've, I've got I'm trying to go back and remember. I know you can definitely switch the ejection port, you know, and the deflectors and stuff. Um, I think I even have right now. I have the wrong deflector on mine. People notice that all the time. I believe this is the nine millimeter because I actually put a nine millimeter kit in here. So that was one of the cool things about I think about the Tavor. They came out with a nine millimeter kit, and then you could put it in there, and make it nine millimeter. So under certain circumstances, like before, I had my own range. You can go to the range and actually shoot this on the steel and do things with it. Um, the kit itself, though, was kind of expensive. I mean, when it first came out, it was between eight and nine hundred bucks. <laughs> And, and as Walter was saying, this is like a fourteen hundred dollar gun. So you spend that, and then you buy the the kit. And I think now you can buy them as nine millimeter, and that same kit goes into the X ninety five as well. I yeah. remember years ago, before the Tavor was for sale here, I saw it. I was at a show someplace, and and the Israelis have an M one carbine kit for that, an M one carbine caliber kit for those too. Because mm -hmm. a lot of civilians over there use M one carbines. Yeah. So now that was the cool thing about these, right? Like, you know, the in, in, in Israel, right? What is it? What is, what's the Israeli Special Forces guys called? Um, 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 I'm trying to think of what they... Uh, well, the Mossad. Well, Mossad is uh, like... The oh, well, definitely. Well, IDF, that's the regular forces. IDF, I think, used it, right? They probably did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so IDF used these, you know, so that was like... The thing about the Tavor that I remember when they came out, people were like, those are battle-tested. You know, and 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 you know what? I I think like they're not wrong. I think this was this was a cool kind of entry when it came out. But there were things you had to learn about. It was a little heavy, and there's things that you had to learn. Like you had to learn like here's where your a magazine ejector is. Um, did have kind of like AR style controls right there, right? A little bit. You know, stripping it's a little difficult as far as taking carrier out and and doing all of that. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, you know, take, take I've, I've, yeah, I've done some work on these and, and, and done a few things and it does, it does get a little difficult, but these came into the market and did really well. I think they sold more than even, uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong, they sold more than um, in the Astyr Og. Oh, they, they sold a whole bunch when they first came to market and, and that was all due to, um, to marketing. You know, they marketed it like no tomorrow. I mean, it was everywhere, yeah. and and that's that's how they that's how they sold so many, and that's how the bullpup market really came you know came back. Really back alive. You know, yeah. in a firestorm kind of a way because because of all the marketing that I, IWI did with the Tavor the Tavor coming into uh, the U.S. market. Yeah, as well as these th these things are in a lot of movies still, movies, TV shows, and all of that. I remember when this came out, I was like, I sold a couple of guns to get my hand on one. It was really, you know, it was it was it was a big deal, and I still have it, and I still think that it's a cool gun. And I know versus the X95, there's people that prefer the barrels on this and think that the Tavor is more accurate than the X95. I guess the X95 has like a different, you know, design. The thing I would say about it is that if you wound up having a Tavor like this, and this is this is even heavier than it was originally, you know, look at all the furniture I have on there. So this was like very expensive gun. You know, when you think about what it initially costs and then all the furniture and things you have to put in there. And then if you want to upgrade your trigger and all that kind of stuff, 
Um, when these first came out, I know that the price now is 14, 15, maybe 1600 bucks. When these first came out, this was $2,000, yep. you know, to, to get this gun. And then if you have to add all this other stuff to it, to get it to where you want to, then I think you're getting, you know, you're really getting up there, uh, price yeah. wise. And, you know, gearhead works. Um, they, they build a lot of stuff for, uh, yeah. for the Tavor. Yeah, I think, uh, the, and that's another thing that happened because it was so popular. You had Gearhead Works, um, Manticore Arms. There's lots of guys that built stuff for these. I'm not sure what the like used market is on these now. I don't know if you were trying to sell them now. As Walter was saying, what, what Walter, what are you seeing them for price-wise? I think I've seen, I mean, when I see the dealer stuff, they're like 14, 14, 50, 15, yeah. just depending what's going on. But so, never... Yeah. Never, there's been never no AR-15 prices on those guns, so. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that could be the, the agreements they have with the distributors, too. They have to keep the price up. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I think the big complaint a lot of people, that a lot of people have, I liked it, you know, because I didn't, there, I, to me, there wasn't a lot of options. And this sparked the market and made a lot of people get into it and start bringing other options, including you, Ken, right? Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I was I was already in the game before they came to market. Um, I wasn't actively shipping because I wasn't done building my prototype and everything yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they they were they were selling rifles before I was, but I was working on mine before I even knew that they were coming to market with it. Yeah, and so they did they did really well with this. The accessory market opened up. And then other people started coming to the market and, and now you've got, you know, um, and people started asking for more out of it, I think. And, and that's how we wound up with a, um, with a X, with the X95. X95. Yeah. Do you have an X95, Ken? No, I don't. Okay. I no. think I've got one, one here. One Tavor oh. is enough. One Tavor is oh, enough. That's it. <laughs> that's that's oh, all the market that, research you need that, to do. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead, Walter. One, one thing you mentioned is it, like, you got a fourteen hundred dollar rifle. You got to add another thousand dollars to it to get the way you want. Yeah. Really? Well, I and I think I, I, I don't. I don't see it. I mean, I don't. I don't. You can't buy one the way you want it to start. Well, okay. So let's talk about the price. The reason why I think the Tavor came in so expensive is because, from what it seems to me, from what I see, IWI basically they weren't building them here. They were importing them from Israel. So they have to come in and then they have to get brought up to whatever. What is it? I don't know if it's nine twenty two R. Yeah, 922R compliance thing. So they, so they had to buy, get them from Israel, you know, then make those upgrades and then send them out there. So make sure they're not machine guns. Yeah. And yep. then they were very popular. They were very popular. They had like limited. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, the machine gun thing, I think, happened with the <laughs> X95. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. I think it was the X95 that that happened with, um, if not the Galil. I can't the remember. The Galil. The Galil. Yeah. Was it the Galil? Okay. Have you, see, have you watched their, their videos on the Galil? The slow mo, no. Have you seen no. that? When the gun fires, the whole thing goes woo 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 woo. -go. The receiver and the barrel, and I go, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it, it, I know they have a lot of plastic on the new Galil. Right. Yeah. And it just it, the whole thing is flexing. I'm like, well, I actually got a Galil from. I don't have it here with me, but I got a Galil from Big Daddy, so we can test it. We can. I'll I'll let you pull the trigger first. Yeah. yeah man, and uh, we'll we'll do some slow mo and see what happens. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. So we gotta stay. Let's stay on top. I'd love to have one, but once again, I can't. I just can't see spending fourteen hundred dollars on an AK that. Yeah, but the whole nature of what's going on there is that this is something that's coming from out, from outside it's of the country. It's exclusive. Well, no, it's coming from outside of the country, so it's getting bought and then has to get shipped over, and then it ha and then work has to be done to it, and that adds. That's the whole thing that adds expense to it. I'm not sure. I don't know if IWI is going to make things here. I mean, if you're talking like I don't know if anyone has an M. Ken, do you have an MDR? No, I don't think the the MDR is out yet. Really? <laughs> Are you talking about Telfer? No, no, the MDR from from Desert Tech. I mean, Desert Tech oh, is supposed oh, oh, to be oh, that, you know, that, that yeah. Wear. yeah, lots yeah. of people yeah. are waiting for that. Lots of people. Well, I shot. I think didn't we shoot that at? Um, we shot yeah, that both shot of us. That's, that's the that's one with no suppressor on the when they were supposed to have a suppressor on it. Yeah, I think the shoot that we went to was supposed to be a suppressor only shoot, and, and they then they were shooting three oh eight. Yeah, they, they nope, didn't no, have it. Was that was that at uh, after Shot Show? You talking? It, it, it was during Shot Show. Right. 
but a but a separate thing from not not it wasn't media day. They didn't do media day for some course, reason. Right. Range they invited, a bunch, range they invited a bunch of four or something like that. Yeah, they did a separate event. You know, right. which is which is fine. Um, you know, I think one of the issues that I saw, if you look back at the video, I have people have been waiting for the MDR. So I'm going to just sidetrack and talk about the MDR for folks who want to know about that. Folks have been waiting for that because that's, you know, that's supposed to be a lot, have a lot of polymer stuff in there, be lighter, have very AR style controls, supposed to be made all here in America. But I know that they've had lots of issues in getting that out to the market. And then finally at SHOT Show where they were letting us shoot the 308 version of it, there was some kind of problem and we were standing in line and, and we could see that someone would shoot around through there and then something would happen. You would have some kind of jam up. And then when I went to shoot, we didn't have the, I didn't have those problems when I shot. And then I think um, they were telling me that the difference was like they were using um, like a performance 308 round. That's why there was some kind of difference or whatever. That's what they said. But later on, they discovered that they were shooting 6.5 Creedmoor. Creedmoor. Right. Yeah, accidentally they put 6.5 Creedmoor in the guns. Who's in charge? Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. I believe, how unfortunately, do do unfortunately, I think someone at Desert Tech, the guy who ever did that at Desert Tech, I think I heard that he got fired. That's all terrible, and I think they're really fortunate that those guns didn't blow up. <laughs> You know, um, in people's faces. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to bring them down. I want to see all this stuff come to the market. That's why I'm interested in these things. And I really try to think about the consumer, and I want to see it come out. And I know folks are really excited. I talk to guys who are saving their money <laughs> for that, and you know, and there may be something good there. I think just maybe there's some. There's like some little issues that are going on. They've had lots of production issues along the way. I think one of the things you have to understand with polymer and Walter, you've looked into this. When you're doing polymer, it's. I think you can get polymer molds here in America, but they're way more expensive. So a lot of people go overseas to get yeah. the polymer molds. Then you have no right? control, though. Yeah, you don't know what happens. I think with Desert Tech, they wound up that the factory had there was something going on at the factory, or they were like on strike, whatever. You know, there were things that there's things that's been going along all the way in the in the production line of those guns, and people would really like to see them come out, including including me. I'd like to see it come out and compare it to the other stuff. What I've seen of the prototypes, you know, it looks interesting, looks cool. I mean, I'll let I'll let Ken talk a little bit about it. I don't know, he probably is no, not. He, he, you don't want me to talk about no, it. No, absolutely. I think you should. I mean, I think people want to know what you think about it out there. Obviously, you're making a different beast because what you're making is aluminum. Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different platform. I mean, it's still still in the bullpup category, but you know why? I look at it. Try to make my words. <laughs> Nice, make nice um, words. Did they bite off? Yeah. Did they bite off more than they can chew? Exactly. I mean, they Why keep they to, keep yeah. delays and delays and delays, and they're not giving their. I mean, people have money tied up in this firearm, and it doesn't do the industry any good when a manufacturer comes out and says, "Hey, we're doing this pre-order, and." Mm -hmm give us all your money and then delay after delay after delay. And, and they're not being truthful with, you know, who they're, who has money tied up in it. You know, yeah. it, it, it hurts me as a business because when I try to start up a new product and I do a pre-order sell because I've good. done pre-orders on both the 308 and the 556, then I get people that are leery because of what's happening at, at yeah, They DG. don't trust you. Yeah. I'm actually against pre-order stuff because, because that happens a lot. There's a lot of people out there that not, not obviously not with you. You came to market and you did everything that you said. I think you're that kind of guy. Um, and you, you know, maybe have a little bit more control than some other people. But that is, to me, that's a big problem, not just in the gun industry, but a lot of industries where you're making something, you say you're going to make something, people are putting up money, and then they're sitting around waiting. You've seen some of the horror stories on this, right, Walter? Uh, yeah, I, had, I, ordered, I ordered a Shrike. You know, I had nine years to get the Shrike. <laughs> nine years. Yeah. Uh, so, ex explain to folks what the Shrike is. It's a belt fed upper for an AR or an M16. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that company's changed names and stuff. Yeah, like now that it's called then. Fast Gun or something like that. It's, it was yeah. area defense, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's a terrible, that's a ter like a terrible thing to do to people. If you're developing I, something, just develop it. Don't put it out there. I mean, and, he would, uh, he, a lot of people got their money back, their deposits, but I didn't want my money back. I wanted the upper. So I just waited. And one day the box showed up and 
I can ask my wife. I just laid, I left it sitting there, just stared at it for a while. <laughs> because like, she was so amazed. <laughs> it's really here. Look at that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, but after you open it up and you shoot it, uh, I we brought the Shrike out to your place one time, I think, or I shot it at my dad's, one or the other. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think yeah, I seem it, to remember. It's fun, but it's like, okay, next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nine years. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, if you, you've got to think like it depends on who it is, right? Like maybe for you, you've got a lot of guns. You can wait. The thing I keep trying to tell manufacturers and I'll tell you guys, I think you guys know this, but I'll tell you anyway, on behalf of the, the customers that you have out there, gun guys, guns, especially in this category, the people buying these guns probably have to sell other guns to get them. They have to work a lot to put this money together. And it's really, those kind of things are really hurtful and messed up for those people to have to deal with. It's not like they have a collection of a hundred or a thousand guns. You know, they really put a lot into this to, to, to get that gun. Even when I first got that Tavor, I mean, I took like, I don't know, three, four guns to the gun store and they were like, yeah, okay. We still want cash. <laughs> you know, they got you. So, they know they got you, so they they just ring it. <laughs> yeah, and and so that's why I try to be an advocate in what I'm doing for the consumer that's out there. And I think the worst part of that is when you take money from those guys and then you leave them in the lurch. It's painful. It doesn't help I, the whole thing. I took deposits when I started doing the upper, my <laughs> first upper, and I, I I think it from the time I started taking money to my first ones, I did it in like. 60 days or 90 days so yeah um, that's I not heard, bad that's, I, heard, um, I heard the same thing from everybody back then well how do i know i'm going to get it well yeah and, that, and that's why that's why i do something a little bit different you know when i first started up with the the 556 version um it was you know put people on a list and then when i got closer i needed to know how many people were really in right and so i needed some some cash flow and so i said 500 dollars on the 308, I did pre-orders and again to see how many people were in and it was a hundred dollar deposit. That was, right. you know, a hundred dollars just to save your spot in line. Right. Um, yeah. That's not I didn't too bad. I, no, I didn't take full payment. I wasn't going to do this, you know, give me full payment and then you'll get it when you get it. No. Yeah. I mean, and it also, it does take, like, if you want to see something cool to come to market, there are some, you know, you have to sometimes take chances and new guys, because that's what we were talking about in the beginning of this. There's a lot of manufacturers that are just making AR-15s. Then there's a lot of people out there who want to see more than AR-15s. Well, those manufacturers are not budging off of that because they make money from the, from that. That's the bottom line of why they do it. So until the day when they stop making money, which that day has come upon us, yeah. you know, we're, we're in that day now. We'll, we'll see when we go to next SHOT Show, but you know, they won't if, stop. If, like I said, if you're doing AR stuff, you need to do unique AR stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to make an M4 carbine, well... Yeah. You're not going to get anything for it. Yeah. So, and then to like close out the whole thing with the MDR, because honestly, we don't have one here. Desert Tech, I have, uh, I have shot some other bullpups from them. They've got bolt action stuff and all of that. Um, they make really high end things. And I think that's why people believe it, believe in, in what they're doing, because they've got those high end guns and all that out there. Here's what I think is probably. If not for them, which I, I think it is though, but if not for them, it's a problem for a lot of companies out there. Companies forget that it's the civilian market that you make your money in, but they, they forget that and they go after the military. You know, And I think that because they're going after those military contracts, they get caught up in all those things and don't really pay a lot of attention to the civilian market because they think they have us captured. You know, that will just buy their thing and they were just going to sit around there and wait. And and they forget that, hey, if you don't, if there's a demand for that and you don't fill it, someone else could come along. You can have a, a small manufacturer like K&M Arms out there and start making stuff. And then people are going to go, you know what? Forget that. I'm just going to get this thing. And 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 they, they when, once they start to look into like those guys might have money on their side and. They can do like real big shows and get real flashy and say, oh, look at this awesome thing that's coming. It doesn't matter if you don't deliver anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And so smaller companies can come in there and if they fill, this is the beauty of, of capitalism. If they come in and fill that market, you know, by the time those guys actually bring out something, they've totally. The newness is over. Yeah, or they've just totally messed it up. And I think that's kind of like, unfortunately, what's going on with the MDR because like how many times, I was even thinking at one time, like these guys should stop telling people that this thing's not coming out. Well, like don't talk about it. 
Yeah, they. I think they introduced it like four years ago at Shot Show. Yeah. Um, and what did they say at last Shot Show that it was going to be yeah. first quarter the start deliveries and they yeah. they still haven't delivered anything yet. Yeah, the only thing that's more vaporware than that at this point, I think, is the um, the six twelve. No, the, the Keltec what? The two twenty three Keltec bullpup. Um, no, that's, yeah, that's, no, that's not as bad though. The, the cry precision 612, which I think is a really cool bullpup. Have you seen that? It has like, it's a, um, a, uh, it's, oh, it's rotating. A, yeah. It's a 12 gauge it and it has, it has, yeah, drum cylinders that you could pop out and put one in. Um, but it's a Brooklyn company. So they're not, obviously it's not going to be able to make that in Brooklyn, New York. And I think they bought a building in Tennessee or Kentucky, someplace and, and maybe they're coming <laughs> Sometime. But I think they're if they focus. beat if they beat Desert Tech if they beat the MDR, I'm going to give them an award. <laughs> I have a feeling their main fo when I talked to them at the shot show, they didn't seem too interested in talking to me. At one time, and I think that once again, I think they're focused on the police and the military. Yeah. Yes, I think that's a problem, and I think and they need to split that company up because they have very high end clothing that 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 cry that they do and and other things that they do. And that all that stuff can happen in Brooklyn, but the guns definitely, yeah. you know, it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen in Brooklyn. Well, ask um, uh, who it used to be in New York, and he moves to Jersey. Um, no, no, put the big show on. Um, lever actions. Oh, Henry. Henry used to be in New York City, too. Yeah. And they're they're uh, out of there, too. Are they in New Jersey, or did they move to upstate New York? Well, they moved out of the city. I know that. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Henry, you know, Henry's completely. The, I would love to see Henry make uh, bullpups, but uh, yeah. a lever action bullpup. Come on, <laughs> somebody make it. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Now and people are, like hitting the keyboard. Okay, if anyone makes a lever action bullpup, it has to be called the Hank, hands down. So let's okay. go to the X ninety five. So the Tavor came out. It was look. We we have to admit the Tavor was popular. They sold more. They they sold a lot of bullpups. Brought bullpups back right and so but people demanded more out of it and eventually IWI I mean they, this was already in development in Israel was already in action that came out of action mine is looking kind of like the Statue of Liberty in the 80s <laughs> that's uh, you know with the uh, this is is this also this is some kind of um, that's a screw on for yeah I'm not sure which um, which suppressor this is for. I think this is also for the Surefire, I'm not sure. But so this is the X95 and they change a lot of things on this. You can change, like Ken was talking about the, the pistol grip here, so you can change that on this. You know, um, this I don't think you have to put any furniture on it and it's got like these panels here are removable. So you see that? I can actually remove the panels off of here and you then you have access to what's underneath. You know, now, you can put how, lights. How how is the uh, pistol grip changeable? Um, this, this, uh, if you if you can look at it closely here, this whole section, this whole section here is removable from up here. Oh yeah, um, you can go without you can go without the guard if you want. Yeah, you can take off the guard. You can put more AR like stuff on there. I haven't done it. I haven't actually seen those kits out there. I think they are out there. I just haven't um, had time. Awesome. So it's an, an add-on kit that you have to buy in order to put a an AR style pistol grip on it. Yes, if you want to remove this here, which I you know I mean there's a purpose for that, like in the way that you you know that you hold it. I had an IDF guy show me after looking at some of my videos on how you're supposed to properly do it. But yes, you can you can change that out. This actually has a better trigger. I should have brought in something to test it. This trigger that comes with this standard is a lot better than what came with the original Tavor. Um, of course, this you know you can you you've got uh, trigger packs and stuff for it because it's not. I don't think, uh, and this is this is a plug for you, Ken. So you'll be happy. I think the trigger in the in the M17S is like the best trigger in any bullpup that that comes with it standard. So it, now, this is still gotta, not a super take, perfect. You got to remember something too. These these guns are based on military guns, and the military don't do a five pound trigger. Yeah. Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. That's not, you know. I mean, the Israelis, the Israelis can't afford. Uh, yeah. For. <laughs> yeah. The, the Israelis can't afford to have anybody shot because they had yeah. a light trigger pull. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Like for the civilian market, we want better, better trigger pulls. Right. But you, the military. You want, you, yeah, you want to have the cushy seat 
on the military gun. Right. Yeah. So like Ken, Ken was just showing the trigger pull of, of the M17S and it was four, right? And it's adjustable. You, so you can bring yep. that down a little bit. Yep. Yeah. I send, right. I send it out right at four pounds, little, little under right at four. Yeah. Now I know that in some videos that are out there, I haven't tested this at long distance. I know I have shot the Tavor at, you know, like over 300 yards and stuff like that. Even I think I've shot it up to like 600 yards. Um, I hear that this barrel is not as accurate, but we haven't actually tested that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good things I think about the X95. It, it is an upgrade, you know, and then they've got cool colors like this and you know, you don't have to change out stuff. They it looks still, cleaner. Yeah, they still have the integrated uh, pop-up sights, which I think that some people don't like, but I actually like. That's a backup that site. Yeah, that they've got the uh, you know built-in iron sights and stuff like that. Um, you can put your your trigger packs in here. You can also put the nine millimeter in there. And now, you know, I think it's a it's a definite improvement. Is it perfect? You know, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm going to say it's closer. It's getting closer. You know, it's a lot closer than the um, than your Tavor. And I think we had some questions out there. People wanted to ask, like, uh, have you heard that, that the Tavor has a 308 version, Ken? Did you hear about this? I, I've seen it on their yeah. Facebook. They, saw a picture. Yeah. Yeah, so I saw a picture. I, I don't know when, where, what, how much, nothing. I, I haven't seen yeah. any details at all. Right. Now they definitely made a 300 blackout version, right? Cuz Yes. Yes. So that's out there. I haven't had a chance to shoot that. Don't know how that's going. Um so I mean if they have a 300 blackout version, they they could possibly get a 308 version out there. Um what do you think about that? It something something for me to compete compete with as one, yeah as one of the few guys that has a 308 now how many let's let's talk about 308 how many 308 bull pups are there out there two two and so basic ones right i think there's some kits you can get some to, three can you get 308 bull pup kits or no i don't um i i don't know i don't know of one but so okay. it's it's the keltec and yours Right? Yeah, that's without a kit. I think I saw it like a, some kind of bigger caliber. I don't know if it's 308. It could have been something else. So here, this is the RFB. That's from Caltech. That's a 308. And I've got um, what kind of? I've got a, a Redfield. Redfield. That's not the. This is. Um, I forgot what exactly. Redfield is like. Um, there's a there's a different different company here with the branding, which I'm like losing track of my in my mind right now i can't remember i've had this on here so long but yeah there you go yeah that's that's the scope that i have living on there it's just been on there for a long time you know and i've got like some pop-ups under there i have shot this at some serious distance this one is the 24 inch barreled 308 this, so this is the real monster which Caltech does not make a lot of these because it's not easy. For some reason, they like doing really long barrels on stuff, like with the KSG. And so they call this one the Hunter. The Hunter. I, think, I think probably here, it, you know, this makes more sense with a 308 having a longer, you know, barrel. There's an 18-inch barreled version of this. Have you, do you, yeah. have you had any experience with this, Ken? So I've got an 18-incher. Um, okay. I've, I've only shot it a couple times. Um, is that Not OD? Real, is that OD green? No, oh. no, it's black. Oh, it's, it's a black, black one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's a black. Um, just their their parkerizing up on the metal stuff is just a different different shade of black. That's okay. why you may think it's OD green, but um, the rail I've got a different rail on top of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I make, well, I did make. I have some more in stock, but in, once those are gone, they're gone. I I made uh, some longer rails so that you could have your backup sights on and not have it crowded in the scope. Oh, so you um, made those. Are you selling yeah. those? I have I have some of them left. Um, I made three different height ones, the half inch tall, this one's the three quarter inch tall, and then I had a one inch tall one, depending on the height. Um, and they're, they're just slow movers, so I'm not gonna keep them in inventory anymore, so. Okay. You know, once once they're gone, they're gone, and I only, I only, I don't think I have any of the half inch tall ones anymore. I've got some three quarters and one inchers. Um, There's just not a lot of these guns out there. Right. That's correct. Yeah. They're 
they're they're hard they're hard to come by hard to find um, yeah, notoriously difficult for Caltech to build. And then what I've found is that they, they're like, you know, once you figure them out, they function. I don't know what you think about it. So this functions. The problem is, if you look here, this is the, the gas adjustment. This has 60 clicks on it. <laughs> 60 clicks. 60. Yeah. Right, Ken? Yeah, I, I don't know how many clicks it has. Yeah, it's it's somewhere. There's it's, there's too many. Well, yeah, once you get it dialed in, once you get it dialed in for one ammo, you can't switch to another ammo until you dial it back in. Yeah. So now that's the thing. Like uh, when I talked to Caltech about this, they said that really the thing about these guns, it's good for someone who does their own reloading. So you can you know you can get that whatever you want if you're suppressing it. You know, obviously these come threaded. You know. I mean, it should should do that, yeah. but you can you can uh, you can set up your own reloads however you want them to be, and then you can dial it in for that. And then the thing is, like what they told me is, you should just keep track of how many clicks it is from the bottom. So even if there's some like whatever 308 that you want to use on there, you know whatever works for you. Once you figure out where that actually functions best at with these clicks. You know, then you just keep track of that. Or if you reload, you can set this up exactly where you need it, make notes. And then if you switch over to something else, you could just go down to the bottom and click up. So that's how they explained it to me. What's your experience with these? So, so if you, so if you have a rifle and you're out shooting and you have your own specific brand ammo, or if you're reloading and, and by out. some chance you need, <laughs> You need to have somebody else's ammo run through your gun. You can't. Um, not uh, not you, until you you got yes. You have to. Right. If you what know, happens, how, does what that, how, does, how does that make any sense? What happens when the zombies are coming? You got to delink some right. sixty ammo. You're you're out of luck. You're dead. Yeah, I don't yep. think this is. I Done. don't think. I don't think. Well, how many Celtic guns really are like good zombie guns? I don't really think so because well, they should be. Well, not just because of the not just because of the. This is like a specialized thing. I think. Um, one oh, of the things with it, it's for, it's forward ejecting. I'm not trying to like defend them. If you guys know my uh, my experience, one of my <laughs> things about battle rifles yeah. is if you have a battle rifle, it, it's ammo particular. It's no battle rifle. Yeah, I agree with that. I, you don't I want it for that. Up, I mean. If I can't pick up some check um, copper wash check stuff and shoot it, what do you? Yeah, I think seven. almost almost eight almost eight pounds okay. seven yeah. seven thirteen. Yeah, it's not you know. That's kind of like an AK that's ammo sensitive. What good is it? Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have the best trigger in the world to me. It's not as it's not the worst trigger of anything it's, that we've seen not. here. Yeah. Now, it's it's, not. go ahead. The, the the length of or the the pull is is not is not bad. There's not a whole lot of over travel. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I give them you know props for that because they've been able to to do something different than the other guys like yeah. you know iwi and fn where it's you know a long pull it's not a real long pull it's just it's just a little heavy the the problem is is that there's no aftermarket um triggers no there isn't no, no because it, because they're so they're so unique and also this uses um what is it fn fal i don't have the magazines with me okay okay so, so that that's the other thing that they made a huge mistake right. on when they manufactured this rifle, is this uses uh, FAL mags, mm -hmm. and there are metric and inch. Um, inch FAL mags. Okay, this rifle will only work with metric, metric, yeah, metric. FAL yeah. FAL mags. Now, if they would have made the rifle for inch FAO mags, you could have used metric. both inch and metric. You could have used both of them. It wouldn't have been magazine specific. Yeah. Go figure. Why, why did anybody do that? I have no idea. Or, or, or why no not even just design them f for, you know, and use the, the AR-10 mags? Yeah. I, I don't know. Right. The only thing I could tell you from my experience, I don't know if people know this, but I used to have a cool relationship with Caltech. I no longer have that, you know, relationship with them. They're, they're really pissed off at me. You were, you well, were I, yeah, I mean, I, I did I did something about the uh, RDB that they're not happy about. I'll talk about that when we show the RDB coming up. I think that, listen, listen um, Kelgren, first of all, is a genius, right? This very, very intelligent guy. He's got these really cool designs. I think one of the problems is, is that, honestly, and I'm sure I'll get in trouble for this, but Caltech runs a lot like a cult. They might as well be Scientologists or something like that, you know, 
And basically, no one there is willing to say, hey, how come, why don't we do this? Or you might think this is cool, but folks out there are going to want this thing, you know, and we need to simplify this down for those folks because they're not all, you know, super, super amazingly talented, you know, engineers or whatever. Um, I think you, I think you need to think about the people out there when you like this and a lot of most Caltech guns. I always tell people, be very careful how far you take down a Caltech gun, because if you go too far, they are the only people that are going to be able to put that gun back together. Yeah, I started taking this thing apart, and I said, "Huh." -uh. I put the other screws back in yeah. and said, "I'm not going any farther." But and that's all deliberate. That's all part of their. That's their intended design. Yeah, um, I don't understand. I don't understand why, but obviously, it's not from the Eastern European country. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, Cal, and yeah, yeah. And, and I say that because you got to make a gun that anybody can operate. Yeah, I think that's the fear that a lot of people. I think this is. I think it's a really cool gun. That's this has been in my collection like longer even than the um, than the Tavor, and I especially being a twenty four inch one. You know, just like you, Walter. I think I'll miss it if I sell it. I had an, an eighteen inch OD green um, one that I did sell to Babyface, but you know, it's a very cool gun, but. You know, if things go wrong, finding parts or whatever, if things get really crazy, the only way that you're going to get anything fixed is going back to Caltech. Now, of course, if you could go back to them, they will fix it. They will do all kinds of cool things and take care of you. They are good with that. I mean, I've seen it. You know, uh, they let people can walk in. If you're if you're in Coco, you could basically walk in there with something that you have problems with and drop it off to them. And they're very nice and they'll show you around. You know, and they've got a nice gift shop and all that kind of stuff. But the practicality in the long term, I think, is missing with some of these things. And I think a big part of that is that no one wants to say, like, this is batshit crazy, you know, if you're going with certain kinds of magazines or it's real difficult to take this down and it's not using normal parts or, you There's know. There's no QD mounts. Uh, yeah, that's how I got in trouble for complaining about the, the lack of QD mounts and all that kind of stuff. I mean, even on this, I've got like this cloth Velcro thing in order to get like a, a point on this. And, you know, that's the – it's weird. It's like a sob, right? And maybe you're getting it because you're like, look at me. I'm sophisticated. I'm driving a sob. I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you say to that? You know, that they have uh you know they're they're thinking out of the box they're they're coming up with some you know different you know cool designs you know i i, I think you know i applaud them for that um it's they just have to be simpler it, it has to be something that the Keep normal joe schmo that's right yeah i think that's what people are looking for and you know what look so here's an rdb this is not the one that I got in trouble for. They sent me an <laughs> RDB. They told me that that RDB is what they were releasing to the general public. It wasn't a pro prototype. And they did sell a few of them. So now after I, after they uh, got really pissed off at me and cursed me out and all that kind of stuff repeatedly and refused to actually talk to me in person, they sent me a lot of nasty messages because of a video that I did really, which it was a positive video. I got a lot of feedback from that and people bought the gun because of the video that I did, but that's that's neither here nor there. Like, um, you know, I, I try to give people my real opinions on guns, and then with Keltec in particular, what happened with that video is that because I have so many Keltec guns, and I've bought, like, you know, I didn't meet them until a few years ago, so I was just buying these guns because I like them. And then when I met them, of course, they would send me stuff in T&E, and, &E and, and I would buy those guns. Uh, you know, after the T&E period and all that. Um, but people feel like, oh, you work for Caltech because you're always doing Caltech videos. That's how they felt in the beginning. So, and that's not the truth. I didn't work for them. They never paid me for anything, you know, none of that kind of stuff. So now um, I wanted to do a video where I showed everyone everything that happened. So it was, there are breaks in the video because the thing stopped recording or whatever, but we showed everything. It was raw, unedited. And what we did was we got 500 rounds and we put a suppressor on it. So it wasn't this gun, it wasn't this suppressor. And we were able to shoot the 500 rounds through here. And the only time we had problems is when we used GI mags. So this, this di is different from the um, RFB in that it's rear wood ejecting so that the round is coming up and traveling back and ejecting downwards from here. And that's what makes this, I think, uh, 
one of the things that makes this really, really cool, right? Except if you're shooting from a rest. <laughs> Because if you're shooting from a rest, those shell casings burn the living daylights out of you. Right, right. You know, um, so, but other than that, and I've seen like, I've seen them like do all the things. But in general, if you're just shooting, standing there, this this stuff is going to drop at your feet. It's not going to hit the person next to you and all that. So, but with, with, um, with GI mags in here, for some reason, it was spitting them out. And when we used the polymer mags, uh, Magpul, et cetera, we didn't have that problem, but every GI mag we used, it was spitting, it was spitting it out. That was really the only problem I had. And then, on t and then, like you mentioned earlier, Walter, look, this is a this is a modern gun. I mean, they came up with this a few years ago. There's no freaking QD mounts on here, you know. So, I mean, that those are my only complaints. And then with the GI mags, what what? Like they said, well, you used old GI mags. The problem is, is that we took GI mags out of the bag. I even did like further stuff and went and got brand new GI mags. I never put that up, but I, I did it just to see. But what we used in the beginning in the first place was new stuff. And then also the funny thing is, I think the same gun that they sent me, they went out and shot stuff with nothing fancy and it did the same exact thing. So that's on them. If you're if you're if you design a gun and it cannot use a GI mag and that doesn't bother you, then at least just Fess up to it and go, you know, doesn't use GI mags. Don't get mad if someone finds out that that's no good in there and it's spitting it out. Well, yeah. figure, out, figure out why it's spitting it out and fix it. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it may be possible to do that. I think it has a lot to do with it being rearward ejecting, right? Because all those gases and everything are, are, are probably traveling back here. You know, I, I don't build the guns, yeah, but I'm I, assuming. I, 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 I doubt it has anything to do with any of the gases. It's all really? it's all it's all mechanical, and you know the GI mags are Clumsy. sometimes finicky um, in bullpup platforms. Um, okay. Whereas they'll run all day long in a, in an AR-15. It's the way that the action is and the way that it's built. You know, if the feed lips are are bent in too much, it may not feed right. If they're bent out too much. You know, you drop them all the time. They they'll bend, they'll distort a little bit, and okay. they they may not just run just because of how the the action is and and how it, it's all designed. Yeah, and honestly, I think even in the video we said we really didn't care. We just had them. We didn't do it deliberately or anything. We just had them, and it didn't work. Now that explanation that you use that sounds so rational. Why wouldn't you just explain that? And go uh, I, and go. Guess what, Hank Strange? <laughs> GI mags, no right, good. I, don't use them. And we're not, you know, we're not worried about it. And no, and no GI mag is is the same. You know, there's tons of different manufacturers out there, and they're just bent sheet metal, and and there's a tolerance factor. And even though they say that they're, you know, spec mags, you know, are they at the top of the somebody, spec or are they at the bottom of the spec? Right. Or are they out of spec and they're just right. saying that they're mill spec? Yeah. Right, right. So that's a so you know, uh, so that's a common thing, and I don't know that anyone really cares about it. Even the guy I was shooting with didn't really care. I don't. I didn't really care. That that to me was a small thing, and I don't think a lot of people because most of what, what do we have? Most of us nowadays, to me, I think one of the best mags is a P mag. So. Yep, for sure, and you know yeah. that's what that's what I did all of my development and testing with was you know P mags, and um, you know then when I started shipping, I started having some, on my five five six version, I started having some some issues with some customers that that had you know GI mags that you know it wouldn't run with this mag, it would run with you know all these other mm -hmm. mags, but wouldn't run with this one, and you know then you got to go through and figure out hey what's what's making it not work and and fix it so that it'll work with all of them. Yeah, so that's not really a big deal. What do you think about not having QD points? Does your your rifle? I'm not, I was going to ask you, but I know. Yeah, well, just, just look. There's there's two there's two on the back. Right. Okay. So there's there's one one here and one on the other side. Yeah. And so what made you what made you do such a crazy thing and put QD points on there? I, I was stupid. I didn't know what I was thinking. I yeah. I should have never I should have never put them in there. I didn't. I, yeah. I mean, it, in all seriousness, it, yeah, in all seriousness, not even if you're going to use a sling. I mean, just putting the QD points allows people to make different accessories and stuff like that that can just be added to it. You know, it makes it more accessory accessory friendly, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. And, you know, if we're talking, you know, QD mounts, there's um, 
So I'm going to knock this over. Um, I have side rails that you can put on and they've got, um, you know, um, QD mounts that you can put on those. I also make a, a slick little QD mount that fits right in one of the slots. Um, I just don't have those advertised on my website. Um, yeah. But I, you know, it's so I, I sent one of those to you too, didn't I? I think I, I sent. I think so. I th let me I see. Think, Do I, um, probably, probably didn't put yeah, it I've on. Got ra I've got rails on the side there. Right. Uh, so, you know, the side, the bottom, all around, if you guys can see yeah. that, there's rails and there's, there's definitely QD points. Yeah, on on so, everything. So, yeah, I mean, is yeah, that too much I, to ask for? Is that me being unreasonable in in a modern world? Well, that's well, the, the what you have. Go ahead, Walter. I said that's the current. That's why everything has it. So you expect it. Yeah. Right. So so now you have a plastic gun. Okay. So are you going to put plastic QD mounts in them and have them that's wear right. out or possibly yeah. break? Right. So yeah. maybe maybe that's why they didn't put them in. Oh, okay. Because then they would have to have a, they'd have to have a metal insert to go in there, and then that's going to make the the mold cost more because right. of the inserts that are going to have to go in, and you know. Yeah, but, over, I don't but know. overall, overall, honestly, there were a lot of things I liked about this. You know, um, I you know, do I think it comes up to the promise of the MDR? No, but I think it did a um, a, a lot that the MDR didn't do. It has some like some you well, know the MD the MDR hasn't done anything. Yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't done anything, and it has some things that go over even the X ninety five. Some things that you can you can show off to your friends and say, yeah, my thing's rear wood ejecting, and it, and it looks cool. They made they made a wood version that's really cool. You know what the thing is? I found that, that these didn't really go out. I don't know. Maybe a few hundred of them went out, and then. If you see them at all, they're just trickling out there. I don't think there's that many of them, and I'm not sure what's going on with the product. That's one of the things I think that happens with Keltec a lot. That um, cool products and no delivery. Yeah, and I and I think that has. If if people want to know, in my opinion, where that comes from, I think that has a lot to do with the distribution system that they have set up. And what I mean by that is they only you can only get these guns through distributors. And, and I'm telling you, a lot of distributors get their guns. Like with the KSG, they're making a lot of them. Um, PMR and stuff like that, they're making a lot of them. But the distributors used to be able to do this thing where they would get them, stockpile them, and then make uh, gun stores only. They can only get this gun if they buy a bunch of other guns that they don't really want. And so if you do that as a store and you have to buy like $30,000 worth of guns to get this thing, when you sell that, you're going to sell it expensively. Then also just them stockpiling it makes the whole thing go up. They can't do that with KSGs anymore, and I don't think they can do that with PMRs because there's so many going out. But I don't know that Caltech has put the RDB into full production. You know? Um, yeah, you, you still can't. I mean, I would like to you know have one in my collection just because it's a bullpup, but mm -hmm. I can't find in all my distributors. I can't find anybody. No, no one ever has one. Yeah, I think I only hear about them coming up like every now and then, and I, I so I don't know. Maybe they just haven't kicked gonna, that in. And you're not going to get it as an individual unless you're like spending a lot of money with the distributor. They're not yeah. going to give it to you. Yeah, it's going to go like that for a long time. That's what happens. Maybe eventually it'll be like the KSG. If you really want one, maybe eventually it'll be like that. If you're wondering if they'll change things like putting QD, I doubt it because of the whole expense of doing molds and all that stuff, right? Probably. Yeah, I think that's how and that's I think, going. I, there could be a little bit of an, I, I don't know if you're an engineer, mm -hmm. but a lot of engineering type people or gun people or engineers, once they design something and it's their way, it's the only no, way. No, you don't want to change be. it. Well, of course. I'm yeah. not. I'm not listening to anything you're telling me because you don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Now, just to, just to, I just remembered another complaint of the guy who actually owns this, Big Daddy. This is his gun. Like, so he actually owns this. He complains about this charging handle. He doesn't think it's long enough. Whoa. And uh, you can't actually get. Uh, yeah, he doesn't feel like he gets enough grip on there. It looks pretty and long then, to me. Yeah, and you we don't two, have an optic. Two fingers? How, how many yeah, fingers? I mean, I can get two on it. That's enough. Let's see exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, some people might want more of a hand. I think you can probably get aftermarket, but there's nothing aftermarket from Caltech, you know. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that's also, I don't think that's a big deal. That's easy. That's not bad because at least aftermarket guys can make something that maybe can go on here if you can ever take this all apart. I guess yeah. he's never used an FAL. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it and it could probably. I think because okay, right now it's easy because we we took the optic off. Like I said, I'm gonna wind up. I'm probably gonna wind up putting, you know, this platinum. No, you're putting that on mine. <laughs> oh, it's going. It's going on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now it has no optics. And on. make no, a second video. No, he has an EOTech. He has an EOTech that he wants me to put on there. I just wanted a reason. I just wanted to show platinum. Yeah. Platinum. The platinum again. It's this is really cool, man. That I, I have this to test. Uh, if Babyface is looking, he's just like losing his mind right now. If he's watching this, so. You know, I think he's going to put an EOTech on here, but he was saying that, you know, he's worried about oh, getting away. Yeah, when you, yeah, see, it's easy now that there's nothing on there. So, But that's not really a big deal, right? Because someone can make that. So it opens up an industry as long as you can remove if that there's charging. There's demand level. for it. There's got to yeah. be a demand or it's not worth making. So. Yeah, if there's only like five or 600 of these out in the, in the world. In and, ten, and 10 guys want to change the handle. Yeah, okay. then it doesn't really matter. So, were there any other guns you guys wanted to? What other? Do you have any? What other bullpups do you have before? I've got one more that I didn't show. I'm gonna eat some dinner. Oh, okay. You're you're out of here, Walter. Yeah, it's been sitting okay. for a couple hours. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Thanks, man. We enjoyed you coming on here. I won't hold you. Hey, be, uh, be, be, before Walter goes, I just want to one, one more real quick. Oh yeah, let me see one. The yeah. weirdest one you got. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if he's been holding out on us to show us something really crazy. Narenko. Let's see what's he got. So oh. I know, I know, I know. Walter has one of these, but a Narenko? Just, no, real quick. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Walter, why didn't you bring that? That's Where? a bullpup. Oh, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah. You can't shoulder that. That's not a bullpup. That's a pistol. Uh, no, it's a bullpup pistol. Yeah, it's a bullpup. Okay, okay, okay. So, All right, well, so, well, tell everyone what we're talking about here. This is an arm pistol, right? Yeah. Bush, yep. Bushmaster oh. arm pistol. Yep. Yeah. Uh oh. Walter's going to get guns. You, oh. <laughs> you made him forget about food for like one second. <laughs> going, Here he goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the only reason why I know you have one is because you and uh, Hank were out shooting. Yeah. It. You showed yeah. the video. So Walter. Yep. Uh oh. It's it's Big Brother. Oh, I have one of those too. Yeah. Man, well, we're gonna you guys. You guys are just making me jealous now. This is coming out Sunday. We can smoke it. You can. Oh yeah. Okay. Can... We'll shoot that. So yeah. explain the arm pistol real quick, Ken. And, and Walter, if you've got to go, it's okay, man. I understand. Thanks for. I'll stay. I'll stay for the arm pistol. Okay. Yeah. Talk I'll... about the arm pistol. I don't know. I don't know much about it except for that I believe that it was developed um, for the Air Force for climbing in and out of aircraft and helicopters. Um, it uh, it swivels and and kind of. Left. Right. Yep, left, left to right, um, so that you can put a magazine in it and have it rest, rest on your on your arm, and you can fire a two twenty three pistol. And yeah, I love of, how the the iron sights also change. <laughs> right. It, yeah. The, does yours have the cocking handle on the top or is it on the no, side? My, no, mine's on the side. Oh, they so made, you've got so you've got an iteration of this. Yes, is, they 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 made uh, three variants of it. Right, right. Um, right. And um, I almost uh, acquired not too long ago a uh, first generation one, um, but didn't end up didn't end up getting it. Yeah, mine has it on the top, so I think right. it's a later a later one. Um, but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yep, they're yeah. they they are they are fun. They're they're interesting. They're they are ugly if you want to call it ugly but they're they're different you know people it's a bullpup i like it yeah people ask me why do you have that thing it's ugly and well because it's a bullpup yeah it's cool well, and a bullpup pistol at that it's yeah. it's like why would you have this but there is some interesting features on these guns and i like to see how stuff is made so um yeah, yeah. i find it i just yep. cool <laughs> yep they, they they are they are cool yeah so that's so that okay, Walter. So you, I don't know if you still want to um, stick around for you know. That's that's a pretty cool. I'd like to get one of those. I'm feeling very jealous. Well, yeah. yeah, we'll have to. Well, anyways, um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go eat some Chinese. Yeah, so. we got to figure okay. out. We got to figure out how to get how to get one of those on the hacienda. Although I can always borrow Walters and do stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, we want to get it. Okay, Walter, thanks for joining oh, us. Ask, just, Ken, you, got, you have the Norinco, um bullpup? No, I don't. Okay. okay. That's another one. So on are you talking about like an AK variant? The Chinese made one. Yeah. Which is? Are you seeing this? This is not uh, This is not a Norinco, but this is a Century Arms AK-74, so 545 by 39. 
Look at that. This is this is one of my favorite bullpups, right? I mean, all my bullpups are, are my favorites, and you know, obviously your bullpup is my, is my favorite, Ken. But yeah. this is pretty cool. Oh, now, you're, you're, you're now, just, now you back. Now you backtrack. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I really like this because I mean, AK seventy four, man, five four five. Oh, you know? okay, okay, okay. And it's really, I mean, it's it, it's got a real. The only thing I don't like about this, it has this plastic uh, scope mount. This, yeah, the, well, right here, this whole thing that the mount attaches to is plastic, so there's probably a lot of wobble. And I've always been trying to get one to like, you know, something metal that's going to go there and make that better. And this actually works. This works pretty well. Uh, Peter has one of these, Walter Peter Palma. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah. Top Shot fame, my buddy. That's how I met Walter. I don't know if anyone knows that, but I met Walter through Peter Palma, who's my buddy, who was on Top Shot the first season. Crazy Marine dude. Um, and he has one of these, and he had some problems, and he got his fix. This one always worked great for me. The um, But the, here's the funny thing. Sentry Arms, when like they asked me to send this back to them so they can melt it down. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, no way in hell, man. That's an AK-74 bullpup. And I think it was a kit, but like um, like, like Ken was saying, Sentry Arms actually sold this. They So they, they got it and they put the kit on it. So I'm assuming that it's a sporter, AK-74 sporter, and then yeah. they put this kit on there. I'm having a, I'm having a, a flashback. I think they used to call it like the SKU-47 uh, or 74, something like that. Yeah. As a kit. As a kit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but this is a this is really cool. I like the um, I like four five four um, five four five by thirty nine. It's like really cool. It's not easy. You can't get that much of that ammo anymore. Well, um, I got plenty. Yeah, I know you have a bunch, Walter. Have you ever shot this gun, Walter? At my no. place, probably not. Yeah. So this is like you know very cool bullpup in the AK category. I don't know. All right. What well, else? So there I'm you go. Say, there goes an AK. Goodbye. Yeah. All right, Walter. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Walter Keller, Safety Harbor Firearms. Peace out. Thanks, man. Um, see ya. Okay, so Walter's out of here, folks. It's just me and Ken right now. So what else you got, Ken? I know we've been doing this for like three hours. People are drinking coffee. People are in bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've, we've touched a lot on, I don't know, are there any questions that maybe people? Just conversations amongst uh, themselves. Yeah, everyone's having a party behind the scenes. I, I wish you could see it. They're having a good time, which is good. Which is a good thing. Did you have any other bull pups to show? No, I don't. Yeah, so I think we went through like we went through a lot of different bull pups, and I want to say, you know, I want to thank, uh, you know, we could probably cut this. I know that for you, it's a little earlier than it is for us. It's like ten o'clock where we are, but this really is a very beautiful bull pup that you make, man. Thanks. It's uh, there's there's a lot of work in it, um, and you know, with being all aluminum, it just doesn't go to. The injection mold shop and yeah now and this yep. yeah i mean i think this is the thing for a lot of guys out there they're worried about most not every issue because you don't have the you don't have the ar style controls i, I i'm fine i like a like a push button safety like that but yep. you don't have all the controls that you would have in an ar style but you do have that you can you know very easily maintain this take it down real quick um, it's very tough and robust. Um, this is piston driven, right? Yep. Yep. Correct. Okay. There's a, it's piston driven and there's, um, the gas block inside with the piston, the pistons adjust. It doesn't have 60 million, uh, spots. Um, we're going to do some suppressed shooting with this. I think that's probably, that's probably something I have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're like, but, heck strange. Where's the, you know, Let's see the suppressed video. You yeah, tested the where, Caltech. Where, where is that? But yeah. you know, so I've got the twenty inch, twenty inch variant. You've so got that's the, the three hundred eight twenty. The okay. three hundred eight twenty. Okay. So it's got a little bit, a little bit longer barrel. Right. Okay. This has a little ten round mag. If you want to talk real quick about. I mean, we talked about this at Shot Show, but oh, this, this is was the, a California. Cal, this is California Cal, compliant, right? Cal, California compliant. This is a the five five six version. Um, it has to have an extended muzzle device okay. um, in order to meet a thirty inch overall length, and it can't have a pistol grip. So we've got a paddle grip, and then a ten round magazine. So this rifle, as is, can go into California. 
Right. Nope. So we, we have a video out on this. If folks want to get like a little bit more detailed, we, we put out a video on this, everything you need to know about California. Are there, is it easy to make bullpups compliant for California's rules now? Um, they, well, they have to have an extended muzzle device on it to meet the 30 inch overall length. Um, so that has to get changed. Um, and then there, it can't have a pistol grip. So you have to build some type of a Kydex paddle grip for it and have it, you know, permanently installed. Other, mm -hmm. other, other than that, it can't have a drop-free magazine. If, it, if you're able to have a drop-free magazine, then you can't, uh, you can't have it. California state law is that you have to open up the action in order to drop the magazine. So okay. in, in my opinion, the only bullpup um, that, without putting a kydex paddle grip on it or something else that can go into california is, is mine because you can change, yeah. the, change but the now grip. didn't they didn't california suffer suffer some setbacks with the magazine thing recently so th there's been all kinds of stuff because i think there. a judge a judge uh threw out the magazine um the and, and the high the high the high capacity magazine right. um mm -hmm. but so that that's kind of sticky a sticky subject because um, California law was is that you could not have any in your possession. So currently, right now, you cannot purchase any in California. But you, you still can, can't purchase them, but you can have them because I think he was saying that it's that's uh, unconstitutional right, to seize your property without right, compensation. Without, right, without without paying for it. Basically, California mm -hmm. law was saying that you had to get rid of them or turn them in with no compensation. And mm -hmm. that's how it was able to be kind of overturned. Yeah. And that's um, kind of good because can we imagine California actually coming up with a way of paying for that? Then it's really super gonna go into debt, but. Right, right. But they'll probably and, keep pushing on this issue, right? Oh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that you used to be able to have an AR with a bullet button in it and then they came out and banned the bullet button. You know, come the first of the year, you couldn't, have a rifle that had a bullet button in it you had to you had to register it before the end of the year and they haven't been able to agree on a registration process and how you know what the requirements were for registration so that you could have it and now there's been a, a setback in that because um they still don't have all that figured out yet so you know what's going to happen with california and, and all their you know crazy gun laws i don't i don't know all i know is right now you can buy my rifle right into California and not have a problem with any any compliance because it has the, the paddle grip on it in the overall length. Now, until they change that law, which I'm sure that will be coming here soon too, um, you know, really mine's the only one that, that, that can go in. Okay. So, at least straight brand from the new. factory. Yeah, okay. brand, so new, brand, brand new, brand new, straight from the factory. Um, right. The other, the other guys will have to come up with something in order to, to have theirs, you know, compliant in order to go in. But to my understanding, there isn't anything that's coming straight out of the factory. So if you have it already, is it grandfathered in or do you have to make changes? I think you have to make changes, right? So um, in California, um, the law stated that you had to register it by the end of the year. And registration originally was you had to take pictures of it, name, name and address, <laughs> um, picture of your driver's license, um, all kinds of goofy stuff. And then, then there was one clause in there that said um, that it couldn't be transferred. Okay, so you couldn't transfer it or sell it or anything to anybody in California. You could sell it outside of the state, no problem. But, you know, so if I registered at, as an assault rifle in California, I could, th it could then not get transferred to anybody else. No heirs could, could own yeah, it. So after insane. I die, after I die, the, ri the rifle dies too. Yeah. So that's um, how they were, that's how they were trying to. Yeah. And I don't know how many people were actually complying with that. So. No. Yeah. No, that's pro probably not many, but they, they still don't have a registration process in place. So. Who knows what's really going to happen with it? I, okay. I don't. I don't know. Right now, let me sneak in this question. Uh, I know I got a question from somewhere that someone wanted to know: Was the was the five five six also piston? Yes, five five six is piston. The five five six currently does not have an adjustable gas block in it. It's okay. just a straight straight gas system in it. 
Okay. So right now, I mean, you know, if, if you're out there looking for, if you're looking for a 556, obviously K&M has one and there's some other options out there. But if you're in the market for a 308, it's either the RFB or the, the K&M MS17 S308, right? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then you've got, and my, you've got them in a few my, variations. Yeah, and my 308 is California compliant also. It's got a, you know, you get that with a 20 inch long barrel so you don't have to put an extension on it. And it comes with the, the paddle grip on it. Yeah, so there you go. So for folks who are, you know, if you're in the market and you're looking for like a 308 bullpup, definitely check out Ken. I mean, you know, just, just for coming on here for like three hours plus. Oh. And Man. giving us a lot, a lot of info. I didn't even realize Lola's like you guys been going for three hours. I think we got a lot of info. We showed, we showed a bunch of things and talked about them. I think if folks out there have more questions, definitely ask here in the comments, and I'll see if I can answer or we can get Ken to come in and answer questions. And 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 once again, he didn't have, he doesn't have a lower third, but he is K and M Arms, and I have something in the description right now. We'll put more stuff. What are you showing us, Ken? Oh, there's just a 308. Yeah. So here it's you go. The Yep. So when is this, what version, what was this distressed gray? Yeah. So this is called, um, battle worn. Okay. Um, it's a nickel boron and there's a company that is doing this for me. Um, it's not, it's not cheap. It's expensive. Um, it's an added $250 option. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm really not making anything on it. So it's, you know, I have to ship it out of state and then it's got to come back and, um, the company I met at SHOT Show, they were just down the aisle from me, and it's called, if you want to visit their website, um, Legal Manufacturing is the, the name of the company. Okay. And they, they've, de they've developed the process. Okay, so they do uh, nickel boron finishing to any gun, basically, or lots of guns. Yep. Yep. Okay. They'll, they'll, take, they'll take your AR and, and coat it with the, the nickel boron, and they'll, they'll do nickel boron. They also do Cerakote stuff, I believe, um, and then they do this new um, battle worn that they've, uh, that they've developed. And basically, it's a nickel boron, and then they put a black dye in it, uh, on it, and then they kind of rub it off. And so there's never one that's going to be the same as the other because it'll, you know, sometimes it'll be a little bit darker here in the mag. Well, a um, little lighter up here, but it really turns out nice because it, it really makes all of the lettering and everything just kind of pop. Yeah. That, that um, finish just, is really just, nice. It just, it just stands out. And then yeah, the I, thing, the thing with the nickel boron is, is that it's really hard. Yeah. Uh, very tough. It, it, it's very strong. It's like a 70 rock. Well, and you know, nothing is, is really much harder than that. I mean, it's it's really hard. Okay. So last question, and what's what future calibers can we get before we end all this? Any future calibers oh, coming yeah. up? Yeah, you would have to talk about that, huh? <laughs> so I guarantee you, someone's going to say you talk for three hours and uh, then talk about six five Creed more. Or... Yeah, there's all there's there's all yeah. kinds of stuff in the works. Um, okay. You know that I I've been I actually had the three hundred blackout. Um, 90% done before I stopped working on that and went to 308 just because I had, you know, 10 to one people asking about 308 than, uh, than the 300 blackout. So I've got the 300 blackout, um, finished. I need to do some testing on it, uh, make sure that it's all what I need it to be. I need to test it with, um, a handful of different suppressors because I found that, you know, with the, when I launched the 308 that, um, you know, different suppressors act differently. Um, so there's a whole nother conversation yeah. on. And the 300 blackout, that's type. the big reason why folks would get the 300 blackout to suppress it. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. Now, so one of the things that I'm doing and why it's taken me a while to do the 300 blackout is that, um, I want it to be able to cycle, um, with supers, Okay, because some people like in California can't have suppressors, so they're oh. only going to shoot supers in it. Okay. Okay. And then I want I want it to be able to cycle um with subs suppressed because that's what most of the rest of the free world will end yeah. up shooting it with right. is you know, subs, subsonic ammo and, and suppressed. So that's what that's what I want. That's what it has to do when it leaves here. So yeah, also I, even even the guys who are gonna shoot it suppressed when they do t like, you know, siding it in and stuff like that, they're going to not want to go through the expensive stuff. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. you know, but you know, if once you do, once you do shoot supers through it and you shoot subs through it, it's going to have a different impact. So you yeah. you'll have to, you know, change your, you impact have to change the setting. Way. Yeah. Right. That's so, true. Yeah. And you know, and, and I found too, that most people that are shooting 300 blackout are loading their own just because it's so expensive to, to shoot and then they can dial it into the rifle and, um, and get it to perform exactly how they want it to perform. But I mean, that, that round is, is such an awesome round and it is so quiet. I mean, it, it's amazing how quiet it is when you're shooting it, shooting it suppressed okay. uh, with, with subs. Um, you know, you basically hear the action is all that you really hear. Oh, nice. It's, okay. It, it's, it's that quiet. Yeah. It, so it, when you've got something awesome. ready to go, let us know, you know, or we'll like, if you've got videos and stuff like that, when you've got it ready to go, let us know. We could put it out there because there's probably people who are waiting for that. Yep. There, well, yeah, there, there have been people because, you know, like I say, there, I was developing that before uh, the 308. And so that, that is on, uh, that's still on the list. Like I say, it's almost, almost done. Right. And, you know, then I, I've got a couple other projects that, that I'm working on also. There's, there's always, you know, some iron in the fire doing something. Yeah, six five creed more. So, yeah, six five creed more. Six five yeah. grand. Oh, you know, <laughs> everybody asks for everything. You know. Yeah. Uh, seven six two by thirty nine. You know the the, yeah. the whole 50 gamut. Cal a fifty caliber bullpup or a nine millimeter. A, you know what? I would like a nice lightweight nine millimeter bullpup. Why not? Yeah. Well, there's there's talk about carbines too. You know. Yeah. Nine millimeter, yeah. 40, 45, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the sky's the limit, but you know, it's, yeah. it's all about, it's all about time and money. Yeah. And you have to be careful. I mean, I think we're in a little bit of a downturn. I know that's like probably not, you know, nice well, to hear, a, but you know, there's not it, as much buying going on out there as there used to be. No. And that's why, that's why you need to be diversified and not just be in the AR market. If you're in just the AR market, you're, you're in trouble because you know, you can hardly even give those things away these days, but yeah. you know, cause, because I wanted to stay in kind of a niche market that I, I still have sales and I still have a backlog and I'm still working through that. I just finally ended up getting approval to go into Canada, which is huge. I, you know, that's cool. two and a half, two and a half years to finally yeah. get and I've got some folks that watch in Canada. So the Canada, Canada guys, if you're wanting to know. Yep. So right. I have an FR, I have an FRT number for going into Canada. Um, those will all go through a distributor. Yeah. So, you know, you they, will buy those direct from me. Those will all go through distributor. Right. So if he's watching turtle wolf pack, Canada, there you go. Yeah. Something so, that's yep, the, turtle. I'm, he's been like a fan of mine for a long time, like a supporter for a long time. So he's a Canadian. God bless him. <laughs> So I've got uh, got the 308 at the uh, RCMP right now to give me an FRT number. I should have that uh, hopefully here soon also. So cool. I'm you know I'm I'm gearing up to to get into Canada. I mean that's that's going to be a, a huge market there, and you know so that's what that's yeah. what my my focus on you know gearing up and ramping up production is to to get those into Canada. So cool, cool. But you know still still supporting you know the the U.S. market because you know that's that's where you know everything started. You know and yeah. that, and that's and that's why I do you know direct sales and I don't do distributors really through uh, the U.S. market is because you know I don't want distributors to do the same thing that they're doing to, if you say that that's really happening with the Keltex, um, I don't want distributors hold my rifles hostage. You know, I want, I want the consumer to be able to have it. So that's why I'm doing direct sales and you know, you get on a little waiting list and we go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So b before we end this here, any last stuff you want folks to know about websites, places to go, how to get in touch with you, basically kmarms.com and then KM aerospace, right? Yep, for, for all the Bush, Bush, Bushmaster stuff and the other the other rifles. Right, awesome. All right, so I want to thank you. I want to thank Ken for coming. You know, it's been awesome, man. I, I mean, I think we had a really good conversation here. It covered a lot of stuff. Yep, yep, yeah. for sure. And and I know that you've done, um, you know, some giveaways to people that are watching and whatnot. Oh, absolutely, giveaways. Yes, yes. for the folks since who are still there. out there. <laughs> That's right. Since we're still there, man. The loyal dudes. You get you get yep. something, you got something yeah. special for these guys. Yeah, so I, I have some shirts, you know, I've got o, OD green shirts and I've got, Wait. you know, uh, some ash shirts and cool. You know, How many I'll, do you have? I'll, I'll let you uh, pick, uh, 
pick a handful of people and get their contact information and then just send it to me with their shirt size and I'll, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll ship them a shirt. I don't. So sizes, well, probably should talk about sizes. So yeah. I, I have medium, large, extra large and double X. I oh, don't cool. have any, yeah. any larger than double X. And in, um, in the colors I only have, so the, I have green in every size, but I only have ash in large and extra large. Oh, okay. That, the ash would be cool. But yeah, so anyone who comments on this, comment on this, on this video on, on the YouTube side of it and then like share it. So actually go in there when we're, when we're done with this video and it's actually published on YouTube, go there, comment and share it and say that, you know, I want the t-shirt and uh, we'll get, we'll get them out to uh, yeah. a couple of, you know, handful of you guys. Like yeah, said. A, yep, a handful of them. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. ship them out. Yeah, absolutely. So like what, five, that's a handful. Yeah, sure. There sure. All right. So sure. five of them out there to the, to the loyal folks who are listening. If you're in those sizes, thanks, Ken. I, I really appreciate that. Sure. No All right. Problem. And I just want to thank everyone that sponsors, you know, Walt was here from safety Harbor firearms. He's a sponsor, helps us do this. Um, Obviously, we've got Andrew's Custom Leather. They also sponsor us as well as RAN CLP and Big Daddy Guns, of course, who gives us this here. And never forget the guys on Patreon. We're on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. And guess what? Look out for this bad boy right here. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's going to be on a K&M MS-17S 308. Right, Ken? Right on. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> Peace out, guys. All right. Okay. Hang in there, Kent.